Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Wednesday night and welcome to Rogues Gallery Live. Like I said, welcome to Rogues Gallery Live. We've got 94 people already watching a minute in. This is awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Uh, actually, 105 just popped up to 105. That's awesome. Uh, anyway, this is episode number 113. Uh, this is our interactive live collecting chat show where we talk about uh, the latest in statue collecting news and information and topics. Um, and uh, here lately, I've been asking the, the Facebook group for topic ideas and I'm, I'm using your ideas tonight. So it's always awesome for you to, um, you know, provide those for us, for us to talk about. So thank you for taking time out of your day. Oh, there's Eric. Eric just popped in. Hey, Eric. Hey, guys. What's up? Um, so hey. anyway, we're, we're just getting ready to do introductions. So we'll, we'll start with Eric. How's Eric tonight? <laughs> Running last minute. I'm still setting up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing all right, though. No worries. Some internet issues, you said. A little bit of everything. A little bit of internet issues. A little bit of camera issues. So I had to reboot everything. And, uh. Seems to be working at the moment, I hope. Well, we hope so. Anyway, uh, we're just glad that you're here. So welcome to the show. Uh, we also have here, right over here, we have Dan from Wayne Manor North, who joined me uh, for a little bit last night. Uh, welcome back to the show, sir. I did. That was fun. Yeah. Hey, good to see everybody. Um, looking forward to a lively chat tonight. Excellent. Welcome to the show. Uh, we also have, of course, as always with us from Secret Sanctuary, Mr. Jeff Delaney in the house. Hi, guys. How's it going? Doing all right. Congratulations on your incredible new premium format from Sideshow. So Katana, she's really cool. She came out great, just like the prototype. It's just it looks exactly like it. I mean, it's incredible. I, I still feel like it's one of the best likenesses um, out there. We're going to be talking about her a little bit later, but uh, if you haven't, uh, please after the show, please uh, go over to Secret Sanctuary and check out that review if you haven't done so. Um, you know, uh, it's it's a great review and. It's just awesome. It's just awesome piece. Really cool. Very cool statue. Very pleased with it. Um, and then last but certainly not least, of course, we have Mr. Jeff Morris. How's it going, sir? I'm good. Hope everybody's doing well. Doing great. Um, happy Wednesday. Like I said, uh, again, hope everybody in the chat is uh, having a great week so far. Uh, it's been one hell of a week for me. Obviously, I've got uh, this guy right back here. Uh, creeping over my shoulder, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, I was uh, just, I, was, I, I apologize to the uh, the rogues here. I was trying to get this review done before we went live. And so I did just manage to get it done. I've got, I haven't edited it yet, but uh, anyway, man, what do you guys think of it? I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but what do you, after seeing it here in the cave, what do you guys think? He looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It Very was creepy. bigger than I expected when you pulled it out of the box and you were next to it. I thought, damn, that's big. Yeah. Um, he's about 34 inches tall, 24 wide, if that gives you an idea. <clears throat> he's going to look great in the new bunker. It, I think yeah. so. It's a great space. I yeah. think so. I'm very, very excited. Uh, I was just telling him that uh, I was just meeting with my electrician right before the show too. Uh, he was, you know, about an hour late. So uh, trying to get that done and um, kind of told him everything that I'm wanting. And we're going to do a lot with, you know, color changing smart bulbs and all kinds of stuff that we have uh, planned for the space. So um, I'm very, very excited. He's uh, I think going to come next week and start demoing the existing lights. Um, so it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> It's very, very cool. Um, I also want to give a shout out to um, a, a fellow collector um, who uh, has been emailing me. Um, he has a great design program um, and uh, his name is Matt and uh, he has a, a brand new renders that he's been sending me on the Bat Bunker. So I will be doing another video kind of showing that off so you guys can see kind of what he has envisioned of kind of what I've talked about. So you guys, you guys can actually get a little bit better visual um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, and then of course, not only do we have rogues tonight, but then also, um, we're going to be unboxing punchline. I just received her two days early, uh, which is pretty awesome and rare. Uh, but, uh, yeah, two days early and, uh, not was it $97 import fee on her. Um, but worth it. Uh, she has come like super early. Like I didn't think she was supposed to be out for another six months. Wow. So 97 bucks. 97, 97 bucks import fee. 
That's the steepest import fee I've heard yet. I mean, they've all been ni like 90 for me. So I was going to say mine were like in the 80s. Yeah. So 97, that's... Well, I think yours is probably a little closer to the coast. So it's like, you know, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not too surprised. Although like <clears throat> somebody messaged me about, oh, what was it? Maybe Talon, that the import fee was a lot. He, he was in Texas and his import fee was like 115. Whoa. Talon, and, that statue weighs a ton. That's a heavy statue. Heavy. Um, yeah. and speaking of Talon, I want to give Dan, if you guys didn't check out the video yesterday, Dan re did reveal that he has Talon now in his possession. It is set uh, up and in his cave. I thought about moving him over here. Well, over my uh, shoulder, putting him over one of my shoulders here for the show. I'm, like, I'm not moving that thing. He weighs, a, <laughs> he weighs a ton. Uh, no, it's phenomenal statue. I said it last night when I joined Chris for a few minutes for his unboxing, um, if, if you in the chat, if you are a fan of the Court of Owls, um, the, the, the Greg Capullo, Scott Snyder run, if you, you have to get the statue, it's, it's incredible. I, knew, I mean, Eric and, and Chris were like, you know, pounding me over the head with this. I resisted, resisted. Thanks to Bat Kid Voodoo. I don't know if he's in the chat tonight. He usually is. But, um, you know, made me, uh, I just had an incredible opportunity to pick him up from him. He had a situation where he had two of them. Uh, and this was for the bonus edition, uh, which by the way, I've, I've got the, one of the bonus hands here. I'm pretty sure this is metal. This is like a serious weapon. It's, yeah. gotta be. it's, it's heavy. It's super heavy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal statue. It's really, really good. Really good. Um, and I know, you know, we all get excited about when we get a new statue in the collection. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure there's a bit of that, but this thing has, this thing is really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. I was just looking at somebody posted pictures today and I, even in pictures, it, it, they don't capture like how dynamic this thing is in person yeah. when it's like leaping through the air like that. Super awesome. Yeah. I'm um, really glad that I didn't miss out. If I would have seen this thing in person, you know, and, and not had the opportunity to buy it, um, it would bother me, you know, and especially I looked at the box, you know, I brought the box. I'm going to be bringing it over to storage here uh, this weekend, but I noticed on the box, you know, it's number 116 out of 250. Like that's yeah. just not a lot. If you can get it, guys, grab one. Worth it. And that was the thing I told, I told Dan last night. I was like, yeah. you know, I, I really worried on this one that he would really be kicking himself for not getting it at an addition yep. size of 250. Um, because it is, I just don't think any, they'll ever do a character like this again yeah. or necessarily this character again um but who the hell knows they won't do a two-face but they'll do it they'll do a talent so who, who knows who knows what they're thinking at prime yeah. one but um anyway i'm just really really happy that you got that piece um and uh i know i know he takes up room and i i'm sure he sacrificed something you had already planned i, I had to switch it up a little bit but that's okay that's okay does something, yeah, does something have to go then and he looks good i've actually got him up um so one of my displays, uh, I've got Batman Hush on kind of a top level display. I think, I don't know how tall it is, probably uh, 65 inches or so. This he, top was, shelf. he was like that in the room tour. So if anybody wants to go back and check out yeah, when I visited so, Dan, it was up on that top shelf. That's right. So I've got Batman Hush on that top shelf. And now I've got him flanked by Talon on one side and uh, actually the Bermeo Joker on the other. And it, and it looks great. It's awesome. Yep. Very, very cool. Very happy with them. Um, so congratulations. So, you know, we've we've had those pieces come in. Other than your Ahsoka, Jeff, do you have anything coming in the sanctuary soon, or is that it for a little bit? Um, well, the uh, Sideshow Zatanna ships February, March, so that should be sometime soon. That's fast, isn't it? Is Seems like fast? it, doesn't it? It does. I don't feel like, didn't they, didn't they just show her, like, this summer, even after San Diego? Or maybe like right, maybe right before. She wasn't even at San Diego, was she? No, no. So that's that's really yeah. quick for them. Yeah, I think so. That's really awesome, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later if we have time uh, as well, because that's one of our maybe potential topics. So, um, how about you, Eric or Jeff? Anything on your end uh, coming in or excited about? Um. I think the next thing that arrives is the uh, Catwoman, and like I keep telling you guys, I still have that Bermejo painting and uh, Detective Bus that I haven't even opened yet. It's sitting in boxes still. What are you doing? <laughs> Get to <laughs> it. How, what are you doing? I'm busy. Yeah, I know. I have boxes all over the place. Here uh, he is, Eric. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's awesome there right go. there. <laughs> Give you a little. I might go to work. I put them on my desk at work. There you go. I don't think I remembered you. Here's got mine that. still in the box. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I don't think I mentioned it. Have you reviewed him? No, I didn't think it was. Nah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's. I, I, I could. Yeah. You, you should, because I, I don't know if there's been very many of those out there. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I think I people would like it. Um, and I, that, that's awesome. I didn't realize you had it. That's really cool. I'm glad. Yeah, um, <laughs> Rock City Arkham says, live unboxing now, Eric. <laughs> there you go. You <laughs> no pressure, right? Well, what happened was I ordered the bust way before I was knew I was getting the entire statue in. So I, I never canceled it. And uh, I figured for one hundred and fifty dollars, it's not bad, you know, for an extra bust. And I'll maybe do a giveaway or some type of auction on it during the next auction. It's awesome. Uh, speaking of giveaway, um, I do want to mention that uh, we have crossed the 40K uh, threshold here on the channel. Um, all thanks to you guys. And so <clears throat> I did say that uh, whenever we get to 40K, uh, I would be giving away a statue and I'm going to be giving one. And this was actually uh, courtesy of XM. So XM gifted me a statue um and they did it as part of a promotion um and that was the dark knight returns um it is the six scale um it's really really good in person it was one that i wasn't um i don't know if i loved it at first but once like once i got it in i was like this is really really good um i was really hoping to see the quarter scale as well but i am going to be giving away the six scale tonight all you have to do is be here in the chat i will be giving you guys a, um, a hashtag uh, in order to win um, so again, uh, it's all thanks to XM. Uh, they gifted it to me and anytime I get gifted something, I'd like to gift it back to you guys. Um, all I'm going to ask is that you uh, pay actual shipping cost, um, depending on where you are in the world. So, um, and if you don't, if you don't want it, uh, and you win, just please let us know and then we can draw for another person. Um, so anyway, I'm going to be giving that away. Uh, I've got about five more statues to give away. That's just ready to give away. So, um, we just need to keep hitting these milestones and, uh, I would love to do that. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun to give these away. So anyway, uh, all you have to do is be present in the chat for the show. Um, and so, uh, you know, please stick around. I think we have a lot of great topics to talk about tonight. Uh, we've got a lot of good photos to look at as well. And again, thank you guys so very much for the uh, 40k. I think we just passed uh, 4.3 today. Um, so again, it's uh, it's just been awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, and please also, uh, while you're at it, uh, with your generosity, please again, if you haven't done so, uh, please uh, subscribe over at Secret, Secret Sanctuary. Uh, incredible reviews over there, uh, and I think he's got a lot of. Uh, really great con coverage coming up as well. Uh, recently, uh, Jeff just went to a really great comic con that just focused on comics. Um, so please do uh, me a favor and subscribe over there. And also at Eric B's all things art, a uh, really, really great channel where he does not only reviews, but also a lot of great repair work on statues. Uh, he is what I consider my go-to guy. I would never use anybody else. Um, and so, uh, if you ever need it or have questions, hit Eric up and uh, they'll try to help you out. So anyway, uh, please do me a favor and do that. Um, Thank you. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think I, I don't know if I came back to you, Jeff, did, did you have anything coming in or are you, is it still kind of quiet in your neck of the woods? Um, the only thing I'm still waiting on the captain America to show up. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's right, man. That is going to be so cool. It's going to be big. I was going to say, it's going to like, because you don't have anything even close to that scale, right? Mm -hmm. In your collection. No. Did the spot for it picked out? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Not. I have a whole wall of stuff, Captain America stuff, but I mm -hmm. kind of don't want to put it in front of. I don't know that I want to block it. Right. Yeah. I would imagine the base on that piece must be pretty big. I think it's like 24 inches, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty big. Reminds me of the Arkham City Harley. It's 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 a challenge, you know. Because I think that's like, like 24, 25 in diameter. It's a round base, and then there's part of the beam sticking out. Right, yep. I remember thinking it's like a manhole size cover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably about Big enough to flip it up and crawl down in a hole if it was a hole. <laughs> <laughs>
the, the crazy thing is, and Jeff and I had the opportunity to see that in person, and like I felt like the presence of it was even bigger than the the torso. Did you hmm. did you kind of get that vibe? Like, I mean, the torso was big, but I just felt like that statue was just so impressive as the yeah. whole figure. There's yeah. something about having the whole figure. Yeah, it that was, was my thing. It's it seemed a little cooler mm -hmm. than just having the bust. I agree. I I agree. Uh, Austin says, yeah, hit the likes, guys. Only 20 likes and 200 people. Come on, everybody. Hit that like button right now for us. Thank you very much. We got to get the number up so we can give this thing away. It's awesome. Uh, the 204 now. Thank you guys for being here again. I really, really appreciate it very, very much. Um, well, uh, let's see what we got here uh, for our first topic. This is a good one. I thought this was really good. Again, this was from uh, the Facebook group. Uh, this is topic number one. What changes would we each make? if we were head of product development at Prime One XM or Sideshow Collectibles. Um, we have talked over the last couple of years about uh, some interesting, shall we say, business decisions on part of some of the statue companies. Uh, you know, at, at times we're like, what the hell are they doing? Like, what are they thinking? Um, and I've even had companies say that about each other. Like, what are they thinking? It's, it's really kind of interesting. But uh it's one of those things where, you know, I think a lot of things have to shift because of, again, worldwide events or the economy or whatever, or people's buying habits. Um, but today, we're each in charge. We just took over whatever company you want to take over. We are the head of it. What would you do differently? What would you like to see? What would your maybe creative direction be? This could be a pretty fun topic because uh, I think I think we all have some pretty strong opinions on it. So, uh Dan, do you want to start us out? Kind of like maybe what company would you pick and uh, what, uh, what, what would you do? Like, what would you do if you were head of the company? I've got thoughts on this topic across the board. I like uh, it. So yeah, go wherever you want with this. We don't have to, we don't have for, to pigeonhole with one company or anything. Know, for, for, for each company, because the answer is different for each company, right? Um, you know, I guess I'd start with Prime One Studio. I, I think, you know, Prime One, um, you know, they, they clearly seem to have captured the community's interest as the front runner uh, in the product they produce. Um, and I know of late, they've made some forays into better community engagement. Um, but I think, you know, the, the engagement that Sideshow had with the community um, when Susan was in place, um, you know, she was a personality that we all gravitated to, right? Everybody loves Susan and, um, but that kind of transparency, that kind of connection with the community, I, I don't think you can overstate how important that can be to a company. And none of them seem to get it these days. None of them. Some are better than others, you know, and it's almost like a drop in the water, you know, to a star, uh, to a, a person dying of thirst in the desert. It's like, you know, any one of them, you know, post something and we're all like, Ooh, that's great. You know, they're talking to us. It's like, man, if one of these companies, especially one with a with a, a product lineup like Prime Ones, kind of went the other direction and said, we're going to over communicate, we're going to have a community engagement team and all that, you know, that's what I would do. I would put that in place because it it engenders loyalty from the customers and, you know, I, it just brings people in closer to the company. And I, I just think it would go a long, long way. I I think whoever would do that would clean up. <laughs> and that'd be the first thing I do. Um, what kinds of um, what kinds of maybe different products would you want to bring to the community that we maybe haven't seen so far? Yeah, I think, um, and and this is one that I'm a little less confident in my answer because I don't understand maybe the business, the nuances of the business so well. But I've said all along, I think accessories for existing pieces. Um, would be a, a great move, right? So when you exist, you know, you invest in a, a, a piece that's, you know, four figures and, and up, it would be cool. Like if they released, oh, here's a special edition head sculpt for, I don't know, the Batman looking at him, Batman Hush or for Arkham City, you know, Harley or whatever, you name the piece, right? I think it would be kind of cool. Um, I, it, for me, it wouldn't stop me from buying new pieces. It wouldn't, let, you know, but it would be a nice option. And I, I would think that would be a pretty high margin opportunity for the. So I think that from a attractiveness to the business, you know, um, I would think it would make sense. But 
I could also see it being scary where they might think it, it put people off of the new statues, but uh, I'd love that. I'd love accessories for my existing pieces. I've said that for years as well. It's like, that's just a no brainer for me. Yeah. I think the issue was, was more like, would it fit? Like, would it, you know, would it fit the, you know, would it, you know, cause there's always magnet issues or, you know, I don't know if I buy that. I don't know. I, I still feel like, yes, if you could, you could put a new hand in there with a magnet or something <clears throat> just to give it an updated new look. I think that's really smart. I, again, I don't know if it's cost effective, you know, to do something like that or not. Um, but I, I just think it would be awesome. But you know, obviously- there are things like paint match, you know, um, you know, color match, the, those kinds of things where it could be that, you know, you're just, that, you know, they're not going to be able to achieve the kind of accuracy that they they'd like in the pieces, but shouldn't preclude them from doing things like, what about proximity pieces? I know some people don't like them. Some people don't. I'd like them. You know, put give me something cool to put on the base of the statue. Like, is there something? I keep going to Hush because he's always right in front of me. But like Bat Cave Hush, is there something cool you could put? You know, on the base, I, I'd buy it. And again, it wouldn't preclude me from buying the next Batman piece, but it would make my Hush piece that much cooler. You know, uh, it Absolutely. just seems like accessorizing these things seems like a no brainer. And you could do it in a way, Chris, that I think addresses what you're bringing up, which is a valid question. I, I think that, you know, we, we, we've been asking for characters like Clayface, let's say. Yeah. You could do a Clayface as a proximity. It doesn't have to be a full body. It could be cool. like his head coming up out of the mud and his hand, just a hand and a yep. mud face. Yep. It doesn't have to be anything. Yeah. And I, I just feel like that way it's not maybe as much of a risk. Yeah. To do something like that, um, which they have done a few of those with as exclusives, as add ons. Uh, sure. I, I, like I know there's been some like X-Men, X-Men pieces they did that with a, was, who was it? Yep. Kitty Pride. Um, and forgive me, I don't I don't know the X-Men characters that well, but um, yep. just stuff like that. I just I don't understand like why that isn't being done because they don't they don't have to have a giant third scale with a giant base. No, just give, give us a piece of it. Give us, yep. you know, um, and I think a lot of collectors would be interested in it, of that. Again, I don't know if it, if that is with with the factory issues, if that would be a problem or not. But I don't know. I can't see why it would be any different than anything else. Like, you know, I, I mean, I can think of a, a million different Batman proximity pieces that you could, you know, that you could develop. That I bet it's a lower cost situation for for them. And I mean, who knows? Like I said, I don't understand the business nuances, but it just seems like a no brainer. Uh, I really like this comment right here from Rapture seven two seven or seven two four said, uh, "If I was in charge, I would make a council with all statue yeah. companies so we can negotiate lower production cost in China. This way, we can spread the savings to all customers across the board." <laughs> what do you do? You think that would work? I mean, do you think something like that could ever happen? Sounds like collusion. <laughs> it, it sure does. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. <laughs> we, as long as we're quiet about it, right? We just have to be real quiet about it, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I do like, I mean, that's, that's the thing is these companies are all fighting over factories and that's yeah. the issue is like, that's, you know, I, I've heard it from the companies themselves. It's like, they're having trouble just getting a factory uh, to yeah. take their stuff yeah. and which that adds to all kinds of problems, you know? Um, but I, 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 I thought that comment was that's pretty good. great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how about you, Jeff Delaney? You're in charge of a statue company. What do you do? What do you do? Well, um, as much as I like, legendary beast and as much as i have a lot of respect for jay it's shocking to me that a company that puts out one or two pieces a year is the only company putting out one-third marvel pieces that seems nuts um so if i were one of the companies you mentioned i would be trying to acquire a license to do that it's also crazy to me that no one's doing one-third star wars that just seems like money in the bank so as far as product goes, those would be my my two focuses I'd, I'd be working on. Do you wonder if, um, sorry, do you wonder if um, that, that Star Wars license is like ungodly expensive? Because I, I, I question that too. Like we see some from Sideshow. Do we see do we see statues from anybody else? I guess XM sometimes. XM does, and they've done some pretty, you know, B and C characters. Yeah, which is exciting. But it is crazy that we don't see more Star Wars. It's just, it, yeah. it boggles my mind. But there's zero in one third. 
yeah, zero yeah. and one third, and what we have, what five Marvel pieces. How, in one third how so does far? how does Iron Studios do? They do quite a bit of Star Wars. They just got the North American license. So okay. at D23, oh, wow. they were finally able to display quarter scale and, and stuff like that, like that uh, Vader on throne. They mm -hmm. wouldn't have been able to exhibit that in, in uh, North America before this year or before last year. Uh, Justin also mentions Kota Wakia has the Artifex and Artifex Plus line. Yes, and they do some great Star Wars stuff as well. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it is it is maddening the fact that we don't have that because I would think that they would sell a million of those. Because um, yeah. I feel like Star Wars is probably way more popular universally than any superhero. Um, Sideshow does quite a bit, actually. They've done five or six characters from The Mandalorian. They have. They've got and a half, half scale Yoda coming out. They've got two different Vaders. They've done quite a bit. And they've done a lot of life size. Yeah, life size 3PO Vader. Uh, obviously, the Grogu, they did that. That sold a ton. Um, yeah. So I think I think it's definitely lucrative for them, but at the same time, I am surprised at the one third, the one third scale market, and especially with the Marvel stuff. I think that, I, well, I guess we have seen some, right? We have seen some. It doesn't hasn't PCS done some video game third scales in Their Marvel video versions? Well, they did the Spider Man piece that was a yeah. big hit, right? But so I think like, that was a video game version. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. I mean, technically, I, right. Yeah. So they uh, clearly Ant has that license, um, yeah, right. you know, to do yeah, just that's video games. Blade. Which I'm guessing that's, that's doing blade. blade. That's right, and they couldn't do the likeness, you know, the, the officially the likeness uh, to that's... Wesley Snipes. Right. So maybe you know, time. so maybe just the Marvel third scale license in general is difficult to get, or else I would think that more people would be trying for it. Or I, I, I just don't get it. I don't know if Marvel doesn't want to do third scale. I don't know. It's just very strange. Obviously, Prime One hasn't gone there, and they easily could. I think. Yeah. I mean, they would. They would. <laughs> they would rule. It. They would, as I say, they would rule yeah. the world literally if they if they got yeah. the Marvel license or the Star Wars license. Um, clearly, they're. Like it seems like Jay wants to do classic. At LBS, that's yes. right? Thing. Another they're company very... could do non-classic. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's it is interesting that we have so much DC. Um, but we don't have as yeah. much Marvel in, in, in terms of that. And it's not a quarter scale issue like Sideshow. I mean, you know, there's lots of different companies doing Marvel, but I don't know. It's just, it's pretty crazy. That's a great point. As far, as far as what Dan touched on with um, the social outreach by companies, did you guys see my post today about the mysterious Sideshow social network? Yeah. What was yeah. that? <laughs> no, so I, I missed it. I, I was at work. I didn't see it. What, what was what going on? We don't know. If, if you click on the community tab on the new yeah. website, one of the things listed on that page is is Sideshow Social Network and then coming soon in parentheses. Yeah. What so who that? knows what it is? So does that mean they're hiring? <laughs> Maybe. Do you think know. they'll start their own forum? Or no? Well, they have that Facebook group, but it's very... <laughs> your your utter silence and not knowing what to say says it all, Jeff. Right there, that's, that's all you need to I'm say. I'm trying to be diplomatic about it. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you need to say. Lock it down. I, I, I would think you probably would have more freedom of the press in communist yeah. Russia <laughs> because anything that is remotely out of that tiny little speck is like, <laughs> and then you're banned. <laughs> I mean, it's Let, like, it, you know, I think everybody <laughs> knows that 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 particular group um, has great, great people in that group. There is no question, but it is a commercial group. Yeah. It is not meant as a fan group to discuss the statues. Uh, it is, you know, it is to promote their products. They are a business. Um, there are obviously plenty of groups. Uh, again, I'll plug our, we got secret sanctuary, obviously on Facebook, we've got the Batman statue collector, brotherhood of the bat collectibles. Those are the fan groups. Those are the ones where obviously we try to keep it positive, but at the same time, it is meant to be interactive with each other and talk about the product. Um, we, we try not to bash things on that, uh, in that, uh, in our groups, um, but and be, you know, subjective, but that group specifically is 
<laughs> again, I don't really know what to say, but it's, it's just, you know, it is a commercial group. Um, and unfortunately, like a lot of their talent has left. I, I saw something. Is, is Amy still working with them? Has she been on, on air at all this last three or four months? Because I saw something where somebody posted and they were congratulating her. She, I didn't realize that she does comics. Hmm. She's published. No yeah. Wow. She's, she's oh, yeah. I think, um, I'll have to, I think it was like Archie comics. That's cool. cool. I don't know that I've actually seen anything. Yeah, I feel it's been other a while. Than they're, they, you know, the, what, somehow, you know, when a hot toy item is released, I'm guessing they pre ship it to Sideshow so they can get that video on before the other YouTubers do, where they ha open it up or somebody's filming it wherever they have them then and send it to them, but, or an unboxing, but they have had no shows yep. like they had. I, I just feel like, I feel like all that died once uh, Autumn left yeah. uh, and Paul. Um, and again, you know, congratulations to them. Um, but I, I just don't know if, maybe, I, don't know, I maybe, feel like that was working well for them. Uh, but I, I just, again, I just don't know if, if maybe that's what this is. Something that's going to do something new. This whole social network announcement. So. Maybe so. But again, they have another event week coming up in March. It's their birthday week. But I'm not sure if there'll be any interaction or just stuff that gets canceled. Yeah. Yeah. So again, Sideshow, if you're watching, all of us are available uh, to be your on air <laughs> talent. Uh, I think we yeah. would do an awesome Hire job. Somebody that, that knows what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know that a lot of companies, and, and, and Sideshow is not the only one. Prime One does it too. They hire actors. Yep. Um, and they're, you know, which are, you know, spokespeople that are used to being in front of cameras and things like that. That's great. But at the end of the day, I think if these companies were smart, they will hire people that know what they're talking about and are actual collectors. Um, yeah. And I, I know like having a YouTube channel or something like that is probably a, a, a conflict of interest, but there's a lot of us out there and not just on camera. Um, find, find real collectors. I think that is a big, big deal. Um, because people see through all that other BS. Yep. They know it's oh, fake. Yeah. Um, whether the, whether the people are, are great behind the camera or not, that's, um, them, they're all nice. The people I've met have all been incredible, but you could tell who's a real collector and who's not. Uh, again, like I bring it back to Amy, like Amy knows her stuff. I feel like she should be on everything. Um, because mm -hmm. she could talk for hours about, about the product and actually know about the product for real um, because she's a fan too. Um, and so, uh, which I think is why everybody loves Susan yeah. so much was because you could tell she was a fan. She collected also. Um, kill the bot. <laughs> yeah. The live chat bot. Yeah. Just it's not wearing them. anybody down. It's just making them mad by the time they get to you. <laughs> right. that's, that's actually a good point. That's true. Yeah. I would love to know the the percentage of people that go to a real person, you know, because every single time I do it, I type in a question and they said, did that answer your question? I'm like, nope. Nope. <laughs> I need I need to speak to a real person. Yeah. So I wonder how stubborn. If I have to sit here all day to get to you, I will. <laughs> but it'll be more pleasant for you if you do it sooner than if I have to play tag with how 9,000 <laughs> for two hours. Yep. I hear you. I hear you. It's well, probably easier to call. It is probably, but I just do the bot. I just do it. Um, so Jeff, since you're talking about it, like what, what about if you're the head of a company, what would you do differently? Uh, you know, how would you go about things? What kind of things would you try to bring uh, to the community? I think my big thing would be, trying to give some sort of information up front when, when a line is started, how far it's going to go and not start it off with a Batman and a Catwoman and then do a couple of side characters. And then the next year and a half, have a brand new Batman and Catwoman start off the new fourth of a line that, I would just finish it some, you know, keep the style similar so that they can go together. Yeah. 
I think that's a great idea. Yep. Um, great. I also think kind of like a, what PCS did with the turtles, they showed us that illustration of all four of the turtles. Yeah. And they only released one. I think them doing that. I've also seen a lot of criticism about variants. People want that information up front. They're like, if we're going to, if you're going to do this piece, let us know that you're also going to do this variant, put it up for pre-order at the same time. Um, which I know is not always easy to do. And I know that sometimes they make these decisions after the fact. Um, I mean, let's say like, let's say they did that with poison Ivy and poison Ivy tanked from prime one. Exactly. We're going we're gonna to do a green one and a, and, a, and a flesh color one, but they both tank. Well, now they're at, now they're screwed or, right. or it's going to get canceled, you know, and, and piss off collectors that way. So unless, and that, that's where I feel like XM's done a really good job. They've you know been much more forthcoming about we're doing a, B, and C. Here, here's what it is. Here's the variant. Um, but I feel like the other companies have been really lacking in that department. Um, so I, I know it's not always feasible, but I think that that would also be a great thing for companies to do. If if I was in charge, I would try to do that as much as possible. Um, but, but don't you think that they could probably, if they if they did that with the with the ivy, and when it came out, said we're going to do this green one. We're going to do the flesh colored one. If we don't sell X amount, no upfront, it's not going to happen. You'll That's get good. your refund back. I like it. If we don't sell them, you, you're not going to get it, but you will get your money back. Yep. Or say you'll, you'll do the variant. If we get enough orders on the original version first. Okay. Um, how about you, Eric? What would you do if you were in charge? Uh, well, what Morris was talking about kind of like touches into what I was thinking about because Dan had like mentioned like it, it differs from company to company, but one that came to mind was uh, Prime One. So for the past, you know, was it like a year or two, we've been getting all these great showcases from Prime One and it feels like almost like they show too many products and then we don't hear from them from a, for a while, like, you know, where all these products go. Um but then it goes back to like two years ago, we were almost complaining like we wish these companies would put out more info ahead of time and let us know what products are coming. So I kind of feel like that's what Prime One is doing. They're just showing us everything at once, but not everything at once comes up for pre-order. You know, over time, it'll eventually show up for pre-order. So I would like to see more companies take that approach as well. Like, like show us what's coming down in the pipeline. You don't have to put up for pre-order right away. But at least give us like a glimpse of what's coming maybe six months from now, seven months from now, kind of like what Prime One's been doing. Um, and then the other thing, I, the only other thing I could think of is I would like to see the same way Sideshow does with the artists. Uh, I would like to see more companies show the artists behind the actual work. So if that was like mm -hmm. one of my companies, I would be showing the talent behind the work. Um. I have to say that, like, <clears throat> listening to all of you guys, you're all right on the money, um, you know, and I think it's all out of frustrations that we've experienced or frustrations that we've seen the community go through. Yeah. Um, so I think I think collectively we should start a statue company. What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, combine whatever, whatever, whatever other company is doing. We take the best of each one and make the best of the best. Right. Um, I think, you know, especially being up front with the customers, letting them know what to expect, what's coming. And I know that could change over time, but um, it just really is important to help us plan, um, you know, knowing if because let's say that I'm on the fence on let's let's say let's say Dan. OK, let's say Prime One said, hey, we're going to make a talent. OK, but at the same time, Dan's not sure if he really wants a talent or if he should spend the money on talent. But now. At the exact same time they reveal Talon, they announce five other Court of Owl statues, a Batman, you know, or whatever, all these different characters that go with that line. Would Dan be more likely to say, okay, I'm in? I think he would be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Without question. Without question. Yeah. I mean, that. So you're taking a potential sale and turning it into a, for sure, day one by simply announcing what you're going to do. Yeah, And that goes back to what you said at the very beginning, Dan, companies being as transparent or overly transparent as possible. I think 
that because of sales being down, I think we're going to see more of that. I think we, I think even like, you know, Mr. J from prime one, he's never appeared. Now all of a sudden he is to me, that says something about maybe how sales are going, the low ESs being part of the community, being part of this community is the single most important thing I think any company can do. And that's why I'm so impressed with like, like John from queen studios, having somebody that actually be out, talking about it and you know somebody said earlier that some of the answers might be canned answers like there's only so much the guy can say like he can't yeah. he can't say everything you know it's like I've, i i know I've, I've talked to a lot of different companies and all of them say we like that surprise we like that tease because we want you to be in, excited and invested but at the same time sometimes they just don't know the answers like they don't know what they're you know whether they can get the star wars license i know that's asked every time of him um so Again, I just feel like that that specifically is being as as forthcoming as transparent of what they're doing. <clears throat> I like the idea of a of a uh, an artist profile, a behind the scenes yeah. of anything. Um, somebody was asking one of the questions asked in the Facebook group was, um, how you know what's the production like? How how do, how are these things made? I don't know. I don't know all of the details. We have glimpses from time to time about the casting process or the painting process, but. You know, I think it'd be cool if they took us in the factory and showed us how, you know, how their painters are painting. And um, and I don't know if they'll ever do that or not, but specifically being able to communicate honestly with the with the, the community, I think. I don't know. Do you guys feel like that is the most important thing they can do? I just really feel like that's they just say like it's, it's so important these days. Yeah, I think PCS is really doing good right now, both Ant and Matt are all over Facebook and statue forum answering questions with real answers. And I think it's really helping that company. And taking criticism and making changes to the statues. But then we were saying that could be a bad thing. Cause then every, you know, everybody has a different opinion of what they think something should look like. So you kind of might get into trouble. Yeah. Taking too much uh, feedback from uh, the community. <laughs> I, I do really think that that's been great though. Seeing the little tweaks um, because again, <clears throat> If everybody hates something, let's go back. Prime one. I'm going to pick on Prime one again. Poison Ivy, Arkham City. Okay, I bought. I, I had that on pre-order. They canceled it. Not not as many people. Well, actually, people did order it. It's just it was a factory issue, according to Prime one. But everybody hated that damn foot. Mm. So what do you do? Except me. You you go in and tweak the damn foot. Exactly. Because would you rather sell five? Or would you rather sell 500? If you fix it, people are maybe going to be more willing. And I know that that's not always easy, but go into ZBrush. Yeah, you, tweak. Would think, you would think that just a awkward looking limb would be way easier to fix than a million people saying, well, I don't think she should be like this and picking on this. You know, you have 600 different opinions. Other right. than she's got a gimpy foot, you need she's to got fix a, right. that. And if it was printed, I can understand where maybe they don't want to go there. If it's you know the, the, the prototypes cost a lot of money um, <clears throat> to have it printed and painted and everything, just to have the prototype. Um, you know, we're you know talking multiple multiple thousands of dollars um, for that, and so I could see it at that point. But come on, if it's a little tweak that would sell more statues, you'd think that they would want to listen and do it. Uh, so again, I tip my hat to any company that's done that over the last couple of years, because in the past, no one would do that. They would not tweak it. And now they're listening and will tweak it because again, at the end of the day, they want to sell these things. They don't want them to be sitting in a box in a warehouse for five, five years. <laughs> um, so is what that is. Um, anything else you guys want to add on this topic or, uh, anything else you want to say about if you could rule the nest? It's one thing to say, yeah, I, you know, I could do this and I could do that. And that's another thing to do it. So you, you never know what's going on behind the scenes yeah. with these companies. Absolutely. And again, this question is simply a dream scenario. Yeah. Um, and Lord knows if we all started a statue company today, we'd probably be out of business tomorrow. <laughs> because yeah. I'm sure there's a million headaches and nightmares that they have to jump through, um, <clears throat> not only in terms of licensing, but dealing with shipping companies and factories and transport and air air travel and just anything that is involved i can't even imagine the, the, the overall logistics of something like that so god bless the companies that are doing it god bless companies that are bringing these amazing products to our houses 
um, yep. as expensive as they might be, uh, you know, it's, it's very, very fun. And, uh, you know, again, it's just kind of fun to, to fantasize a little bit about what it would be like to, if we were in charge and I, I guarantee if I was in charge, I'd bring you guys a damn clay face. <laughs> <laughs> and how about uh, to, to solve some of your uh, le- uh, latest issues, Chris, how about uh, we get some better boxes? Like what uh, XM's doing with their boxes? <clears throat> oh my God. I, I, again, uh, let me, I think I still have it. So if you guys missed the unboxing last night, um, this was my box. Um, so not only was the top shredded to hell, it's like paper thin, by the way. Like I, 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 I moved it empty today and it just crushed. It caved in. Chris, did you even save it? I did save it. I mean, it's in the, it's in my garage. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if I should even keep it. Like, I don't even know if it's worth it. I, um, I had, I don't know if you remember a few years back, I had the, um, actually it was probably four years ago. I had the, uh, the iron studios Thanos that, that came to me in very similar condition. And after I, when I took the styrofoam out of the card, the outer cardboard, the part that was really damaged, it's like the cardboard almost didn't even want to stand up properly. Like I couldn't even save it. Uh, I went on to sell that statue two years later and I, I literally had to make a box. Yeah. It was just brutal. I'm thinking know? about, I'm thinking about getting rid of it because it's the same thing. You stand it up and it just like, it's just floppy. It yep. flops in on itself. <clears throat> There's and no it's support. Not protect. It's not going to do its job when you no. go to show no. somewhere. <clears throat> I mean, I will say that the, the, and people made the comment in the Facebook group is like, Chris, it did its job. Yeah. It did. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the, the statue is here. It's fine. But I may not do it again. But, but you can't, you can't but use I'm it. not going to be able to use it again. That's the thing. It's and that's like, the thing. UPS, you know, most likely doesn't know that. They say, all right, it's a box and it made it to your house. But right. for, you know, people that understand what's in it, well, now this is a, you know, a collector, you know, a collectible and you might want to sell it down the road to somebody yeah. else and reuse that box. Sure. And, and, and the, you're not going to want to put the, it in a bigger box because the bigger the box, then you run into dimension, weight and all that and shipping prices get more expensive the bigger the box so it's well and my ups driver when they when they dropped it off they're like i don't know what the hell happened to this box he, there i mean he would apologize he's like he clearly like fell off of a skid or something i don't know but <clears throat> there was a small dent in the box um but you know just not noticeable and it didn't pierce the styrofoam or anything so i mean it like i said it did its job but good lord yeah um it's Once. a nightmare it's and it's and that's, it's life and service <laughs> that's been two in a row because my talent was like that uh, but i did get punchline today uh again guys unboxing is going to be friday night at seven um and that box was fine it's actually not too big of a box either it's actually really pretty decently sized so, so. that's actually one thing other thing that companies could do right now is be more transparent about shipping yeah. there was a really weird thing today where you guys probably saw that the um skeletor bust from Tweeterhead is a yeah. 25% off the sideshow. Big which sale. Which is an awesome deal. It's a great price. But people were frustrated because they put it in their cart and the shipping is like $335 to the US. You're kidding. Yeah. So, but the weird thing is, you know, sideshow sh- ships UPS, but they ship DHL to Canada. So if you were in Canada and you put the Skeletor bust in your shopping cart today, the shipping charge was about 170 US. No huh. way. Wow. Half. Hmm. Half. We go to Canada. That sucks. So can so should it be an option of what you who you want to use as your shipper then? Like should don't that be a thing? I think sometimes they give you an option of UPS or FedEx, but they don't give US customers the DHL option. Yeah. I, I wonder so if I that I wonder if that is a uh, contract deal. Like it's like they only have the license to ship outside of the country. Yeah, maybe. You know. Could be, but it just looks really bad. But again, yeah. wouldn't it be cool if we had somebody that came out and said that? That's my point. That's they, your they point. Be, yeah. yeah, they need to be more transparent right now and shipping is so weird about why it's weird and why these things are happening. I yep. mean, instead of us, which, I mean, hell, it gives us some great stuff to talk about, but of course we're, you know, we could yeah. be talking out of our butts too because we don't, we don't know. But, mm-hmm. you know, if somebody from sideshow or Chris or somebody came out there and said, Hey guys, I saw your post in the, in our Facebook group about this topic. Here's why a, B and C. And if we know a, B and C, then there's nothing to bitch about. It's like, if this is the contract we have, this is the negotiated agreement we have with DHL. Then we, we have nothing to bitch about because that's it. 
But instead, yeah. we don't hear from them. So at the same time, then we speculate and we're like, well, crap, that's not fair. And then any mm-hmm. comments or posts about it in their Facebook group just disappear. <laughs> well, it's looking shifty. Yeah, well, yeah. It, but it's not just there either. It could be ta- it could be talked about anywhere. Oh. But it would be nice if like we talk about it in our group. It'd be cool if they were part of our group and said, hey, this is why. Um, again, I, I, I understand what their group is for. Their group is for a certain thing. But all the other Facebook groups out there that talk about this stuff, I mean, this is stuff that matters to us. It's, it matters whether we buy something or not. And again, if, if, if I can get shipping for half the cost, Makes that would difference. be amazing. That would maybe make me buy something. Yeah. But 300 some, I mean, I'm, I'm going to put on the brakes. So I don't know. It's just, again, I feel like, again, it all comes back to transparency and being just communicating. I think that's so important, but. Uh, you guys that ready to move on? A deal on that bus if anybody wanted it. It's, a, it's like, such a it's such a great bus too in person. It's awesome. It's so they might have made they might have made too many that the, the addition size is a thousand on that, which might be a little high for that piece. And but, it's big too, like it's big, so like not everybody can maybe accommodate it. Um, and right. maybe they're collecting the smaller fifth scale, which are also incredible. Um, sounds like they're going to be shipping merman soon. Um, they're hoping for next month. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, I saw that uh, posted today. So, uh, congratulations. I mean, again, those, those, that line, speaking of amazing lines, like that line is so good. Yeah. But, so, that, good. but that post kind of made me laugh a little bit because anytime a, a sentence starts with, if everything goes as planned, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, God, God bless Chad, you know, at least attempting out there, you know, to say, Hey, yeah. we're, we're hoping. Cause I mean, he's told me before privately, it's like, He's expecting this to come in and it doesn't come in because of a crate or a factory issue or whatever. But it's like, he's told, Hey, it's supposed to be here March 1st. And then that's March 1st. He still hasn't heard from him. Like, so he, he gets frustrated just like we do. So I don't know. There's always, there's always logistics, but again, him just coming out and saying, Hey guys, we're having a problem with the, with the transport or the factory or whatever. Just tell us, you know, and we'll, we'll be understanding. It sucks, but we'll understand. We're all a grow up man, baby. So, you know, <laughs> we'll only throw a little bit of a fit. Uh, how about, since we're talking about factory production and things like that, let's talk about topic two. And this, this probably won't be too long of a topic. Um, but uh, somebody, again, mentioned in Facebook, uh, they had concerns about statues here lately seem to be, have been made faster. Um, a lot of them are releasing way before they were supposed to. Um, and how will that collect how you collect or how will that affect how you collect um so an example for me was again that that punchline I, I don't think she was supposed to be out for months and months and months and months but yet here she is yeah. um same with uh joker because joker is one the joker that goes with her is one that i uh you know take a peek at maybe like you know, every few weeks just to see what's going on with it and uh originally it was set for the end of this year to early next year mm-hmm. Then it was set to like towards the end of the uh, this year, and I just checked it. I think yesterday or today, and now it's set to July to October. Um, well, and and wow. this is a little behind the scenes stuff, but <clears throat> Mr. J, I was having a conversation with their creative director, and he sent me a photo, um, and it was of the Jokers, and it, they're basically done. Like, I mean, they're all painted. Oh. They're all going through QC right now. Um, so, uh, and again, he's saying that these are turning out better than the prototype. He thinks they're really impressive. Awesome. So uh, I'm looking at punchline right now. So the punchline, the DX, uh, the, it's an ES set at 500. And the regular is uh, 100. So 600 total for punchline, uh, which is a decent ES, I think. Uh, obviously, not as good as the the Talon at what was it, two fifty for Talon. Um, but obviously, if the ESs are smaller for a lot of these companies, that means that less people are buying. Correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, does that mean that they're able to get more painted quicker? I'm assuming, um, or maybe they're the factory is able to take on more. If a normal factory, let's say a factory, is going to take on ten thousand pieces but they're only actually going to be making 500 well now they have a whole bunch of room for other things to make mm-hmm. um and that's assuming that they have the full staff and i don't know what staffing's like right now i know staffing in the united states is god awful but i don't know what it's like in china 
I would assume that people are still working pretty well. Um, but it really has uh, caused some collectors to kind of rethink how they how they're doing things because they have payment plans or they're trying to budget. Do you think this will affect things in a positive way or a negative way for collectors? I'm trying to see kind of both sides of the coin. Um, I don't use payment plans. Uh, I just pay for everything at the end uh, other than my deposit. Um, what, do you, what do you guys think? Do you guys think this is a good thing that there are things are coming out quicker? Or do you think it's going to kind of like kind of screw everything up in terms of financial planning? Well, I saw, so I saw a few people mention that, that it messes up the payment plan. Um, you can still, cause you don't get, if you do full payment, you don't pay the full payment until it's ready to ship. So you can still take your money and set it off to the side each month instead of giving it, you know, to one of the companies each month. So I don't see it, you know, it doesn't affect, you know, a payment plan option. Well, yeah, it does because you don't have as much time to save up that money. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, Matt T says, uh, again, Brotherhood member, uh, Matt's been on the show many times. <clears throat> as someone who uh, uses, or as someone who used to do deposits on statues, having it released six months early hurts and caused me to cancel Punchline. Hmm. Going forward, planning, uh, planning on payment plans only, but to do that won't pre-order many. So again, that, uh, that is definitely going to hurt his purchase right there. Mm -hmm. uh, Rapture says a short timelines for production is double is a double edged sword. The good we get it faster than a year. The bad is super short time it makes it difficult for collectors who are trying to save for the statue. And again, that goes back to what Jeff just said. Yep. Um, uh, let's see. I think they're making them before they announce them like XM did with Thanos and lady death and apocalypse. So yeah, that is a good point there. There have been some companies that have already basically made a production sample prototype basically where they've made a whole bunch and which is kind of what didn't, didn't they kind of do that with the bat bike dan uh that thing came out way quicker than it was supposed to way faster yep i don't know if they all did but i know we got ours like really fast um and so i and xm has admitted that they've done that where they are saying well we've already started production yep maybe not fully but they at least they have an idea that like, let's say that they, they think they're going to sell a hundred of them. Well, so they're going to make the hundred and then let's say that the, the ES ends up being 300. Well, and then, then maybe they finish the other two later <clears throat> or kind of like what sideshow does with the batches. I don't yeah. know. Um, but Thanos and Lady Death were a little different because they, they were the delivery times were as they said they would be. They just, like you said, started production really early, but that went up for PO and like, june and shipped in december but they told you ahead this is going to ship at the end of the year and we were like oh my god that's amazing and actually that's, that's i think that's the reason why some people ordered it. it was like really exciting that this was going to come so fast so in that particular case it didn't ship early it just it was planned to ship early okay uh matt t says the short time on payment plans makes the payments much higher too which limits how many you can have on pre-order at once um, yeah. Also a great point. So I'm, have you guys ever used the payment plan? Mm -mm. Uh, yeah. With who? Any, anybody. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so explain to me, cause I've never used it. So let's say that the, the estimated shipping is a two year window. Okay. And you have the two years to make those payments. Is it like, let's, let's just say it's once a month or something yeah. like that. That's my so point. if they ship it within a year, instead of the two year window, do they adjust those payments to higher amounts per month? I'm assuming they would have to, right? Well, or do you still have the two years to pay it and they, they just don't ship it until after the two years are paid? Well, it seems like Sideshow doesn't ship till it's paid for because yeah, people, right. you know, stuff is already shipping, but people haven't got it paid for and they're on payment plans. So um, I would imagine, you know, they either have some there in case people pay it off or they have some somewhere I, yeah. i've never experienced chris where it, it's going to ship that much <clears throat> earlier usually the way i'm trying to think um the payment plans that i've done it's just for me it's convenient if they say you know most of the time the the ship date is usually about a year with sideshow mm -hmm. Um, you know, give or take. And I think if I'm thinking about it correctly, they usually have the payment plan run up to about 
a month or two before the expected ship date. Um, yeah. And a few times that I've done it, it seems to work out pretty accurately. Um, although I have, I, I can remember one time where it was uh, shipping like the month before mine was due to be paid in full. And so, and I didn't realize it until it was too, until I started seeing people like post that they were, get, they were getting ship notifications like, hey, it's mine. And I'm like, oh, it's not paid for yet. But it was only like a month. Um, so I just made that final payment right then. And I had shipping within a couple of days. So, you know, if you want it, yeah. now I, I don't do that anymore. Usually, usually I'd kind of do like you, I just pay for it at the end and I've got my separate, you know, little fund that I put, you know, I squirrel money away for to whatever, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is convenient. It, it takes, it take it, it puts, takes the discipline out of the equation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> be disciplined about right saving, but uh you know uh well, man no, says, oh go ahead go ahead no i am i'm probably gonna get a lot of hate from uh, saying this but that's the other thing i feel like if i need to put a statue on payment plan i probably don't have enough money not that i'm you know rich to begin with but it's probably not something i should be buying in the first place if i have to you know, <gasps> set, you set aside uh, 50 100 dollars <laughs> a month for a statue yeah i hear you uh, Matt says sideshow payments used to be about $50 a month. Um, now they're a hundred dollars a month for poison Ivy. So a big difference. There's there. a good reason to that though. Look at the shipping window for that piece. It's that could be coming as early as August. That's a great point, which is incredibly fast. Yeah. So you know, that had to be, they had to be making that as it came up to order the first day. Could be. Uh, back kid voodoo, um, who I believe Dan bought his talent from. I did. Uh, uh, I really wonder about the longevity of the newly established statue collector community. I think us long termers are seeing massive industry changes because of the new customer base that aren't stable. I think that's, that's think that's fair. I think that's true in a lot of industries that are more connected to discretionary spend, like this one is. Um, all took the biggest the the brunt or the, you know, saw the most turbulence coming through COVID, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was actually just talking about somebody with this at dinner tonight before I came on the show. We were talking about um, that that person is uh, involved in a business, um, part of a consortium that owns a, a collectibles business and sports memorabilia. Yeah. And um, they offer, it's a platform for selling shares in very high-end seven-figure up kind of sport, like Mickey Mantle's rookie jersey. Kind That's of cool. That's awesome. And you can buy shares in these things and they trade on a platform like a, like a securities exchange almost, right? So we were talking about this and he said during COVID, the company was flying and now they're like woof, tanking. Like they, they just, there's not enough, enough activity. There's a lot of collectors in their universe still, but they're not trading as much. There's not as much activity, mm. right? There's interest there, but, and I think there's a lot of, businesses that are tied to discretionary funding are feeling this the most and, and we're no different did he say anything about like new collectors coming in though like did he or is it pretty no, much just seeing like... nearly as many coming in yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. especially at that kind of price point yep that happened in vintage comics too uh during the pandemic there was a whole bunch of crypto money that came yeah. into vintage comics yeah and it mostly affected silver and bronze age and Dealers were loving it. Prices went bananas on stuff from the 60s, 70s, 80s. And uh, and now that's correcting itself. There's an mm -hmm. there's a definite correction happening in silver and bronze. Not so much with gold. Gold's pretty stable. But uh, it's been shocking for some collectors how far some things have plummeted. Some keys have plummeted in the past year. Yeah, because they seem to be going crazy. It was nuts. Dude. And especially every time any like Marvel announced a show or a character came in or, you know, yeah. a movie was announced three years down the road, right. the comic book just went insane. Yeah. Very true. Um, let's see. Somebody had a question back here. Um, <clears throat> Superman says, are, are companies releasing pieces faster in order to keep collectors interested and offset the anger of shipping costs or other things. 
again, I, I personally okay, just okay. think it's because people aren't buying as much. And so they're able to ship it out quicker because it's a lower ES. The, um, the factories are able to get those things done because, I mean, you know what they're not having to do. How many pieces do they normally, I mean, what, a couple thousand? If they make a new Batman or a character, it's usually, you know, 1,500 regular, 500 exclusive, and now it's completely upended where you have 50 regular and 100 exclusive. That, that thing, that swap is interesting to me. Like, well, how, how did the, you know, now the regular is so, such a small amount, but the exclusive is a lot more. Right. That has to tell you that that's how it was ordered. Rather than there, there not going to be any extra sitting around that you're going to be able to pick up. Well, I, I've heard in the past, and I don't know what it's like now, but I've heard in the past that factories <clears throat> would require a minimum. Um, and so... Mm -hmm. You know, because, they, you know, they want to get as much maximized money as possible from the company for what the service they're providing. And there's only so many factories to go around. So it'll be real. It would be, it would be interesting to have somebody that worked at a factory like that to, you know, kind of talk about what's business like right now. Like, you know, are they how are they, you, you know, if if there's the ES, if <laughs> I guarantee that the, the order for Talon was, was they were hoping for much higher, I'm sure. sure. Um, but, you know, at, at, at an ES of 250, I mean, that's, again, shocking. Uh, and again, congratulations to Dan on his uh, getting his in this week. Um, but I don't know. It, it's just really interesting. Um, and again, that's just why I feel like it's it's coming out so much quicker. Um, well, the factories are not going to want to be sitting idle either. Absolutely. Right. So Correct. that tells me that the high prices that they were able to get away charging, they're going to have to drop because instead of, 2500 punch lines we're only making 600 so now what are we going to do this other couple months we have planned to do this that we didn't they didn't sell now they don't want i'm assuming they just push everything else forward don't you think i think that's why the stuff is speeding up yeah i mean if if punch line was supposed to take this amount of time but it only took if it took six months left. Well, the next thing that they're waiting on, let's say it's a Jurassic Park piece. So they just push that one in that that yeah. six month window slot and just keep it going. I mean, that's the thing is I'm, I'm sure the factories are I don't I, I can't imagine them slowing down because there's so much product that's coming. Uh, I mean, just look at Prime One alone. I mean, there's like those next yeah. level showcases. They've got a million licenses and a mil million products they've teased. So it I mean, may not be three years now. Right. Before that's something the, comes out. And that's a, that's a giant plus for collectors, like at least for me, because I like it. I would rather, like, I don't care how much it costs. I want it to get to me quicker, so I don't have to wait yeah. three years for you know this Harley right there. You know that Harley, three years. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to wait three years because then then it get you know you kind of we've talked about it before that you get kind of to a point where like do I really even want this anymore? Like I don't. I'm like excited yeah. about getting this. Now there's been five new ones announced. <laughs> Uh, Stanley well, has a great point. Do you think the weakness in comic book movies as of late, because a lot of them have not done really great, do you feel like that's hurting statue sales? Can't help. Uh, I was gonna yeah. say, none, I think it, none of it can help. No, I think it's a very valid uh, a point. I, the only thing that I'm shocked with is I'm not. I'm surprised that we haven't got more Batman, uh, the, the Batman statues. Uh, we got yeah. the one from Robert Pattinson um, and the one, the, the Jim Lee one. But like... Sideshow teased the bat bike, and that's just gone MIA completely. Um, yeah. Great uh, Matt Black sculpt. Um, but why? Have, I mean, that, that was a massive, massive hit. But yet, they didn't capitalize on it, even a hit. So, I mean, all these other movies tanking, like Thor, what was it, Love and Thunder, and some of those, uh, some of those other ones, like they, they've just not done very well. It's not helping, not helping at all. Uh, Lane Kramer says, I think the days of 1,000 to 6,000 ES from Sideshow are over. Um, no. I, I, I disagree. I disagree with that. I think it, I think it just depends on the piece. Um, but clearly there's 2,700 for the J. Scott Campbell evil queen. 
Yeah, there's going to be some pieces. Thirteen hundred for Frankie Reborn. Now we might not get a ten thousand dollar or ten thousand ES one or something crazy, um, but because how much was the which was the one that we said is going to sit in the warehouse for the next twenty years? Um, Christopher Reeve Superman. Right. How many? They made a ton of those. Six thousand. Yeah. I so, think that probably was in the works before. Yeah. The Earth shifted. <laughs> yeah. Mythos Gator's like ninety five hundred. Yeah. Oh, but you uh, know, the new- there's things like that. They're going to sell a crap. You know, Darth Vader's going to sell till. Yeah. People, you know, Darth Vader's going to be eternal. There's collectors that are going to want that down the road. Psylocke is 2000. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. When you look at the, the, the Joker and the Harley Quinn. There's, but I, just, there's just too many Jokers and Harley Quinns. It's crazy. Well, There's I think so you're right many. about the base on the Harley Quinn because that's that killed it. Yeah, it didn't matter how good it looks. Yep, it's setting in some melted cotton candy. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody said that the uh, they, they disagreed with me. The Batman wasn't a massive hit. Uh, I just looked it up. Uh, world worldwide gross was 770 million. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty solid so, i think that movie agree was to disagree bigger i think that movie was way bigger than they thought it would be yep i i think so too and pe- it, it, people are desperate for it yep they were they were desperate for a batman film like that i think but i mean whether the second one does as well after the people saw the first one just because it made 770 doesn't necessarily mean it was loved by everyone but yeah, it's pretty strong i it's think it's going to depend on the villain chris I think so too. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I can't, I can't say, but I think I know who the villain is. I think, I think it was kind of leaked to me by accident, but it's oh, pretty we're going to yeah. have a chat after this show. Yeah, we're going to have a little <laughs> chat because sometimes companies know yeah, who oh, these characters sure. are going to be three years in advance. You know, the yeah. is, so yeah, you must have missed that. He kind of already told us. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think he did. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll go back and we'll talk about it. But uh, yeah, yeah it's pretty it? crazy. Pretty crazy. Um, well, anything else you guys want to talk about this topic or do you guys want to move on to photos? Photo time. Photos. photos. All right. Oh, buckle up. Buckle up. Simulation. <laughs> buckle up, buckle up. Mm. That trailer looks just, like he's going to slap that card on the back of your head. <laughs> uh, you're making you an ultimatum right there. That's right. Yeah. Uh, just again, uh, so you guys know that uh, we are doing the giveaway here in just a little bit. Hey, Chris, can I ask you a quick question? Because uh, I was watching your uh, your live stream of that. So you said the the knife is plastic. So like the handle is plastic or the actual blade is plastic? The whole thing. Okay. Yeah, I was it thinking does. that's probably for uh, you know like shipping reasons. They probably can't ship a... It's yeah, it's like pretty, yeah, yeah. This, is, this whole thing is plastic. It's, I know it's that the pallet thing's metal. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's in, crazy. It's in, yeah, it's maybe a, it's because yeah, it Dan is a true. Knife. Yeah, show that again, Dan. That's a real weapon. You can take uh, somebody out with this thing. Yeah. Well, I think by law it has to be like four inches and over. Is like oh, that's true too. Good. Yeah. This, so this is plastic. It also like this is not real. Like the Joker, why so serious? It wasn't like that in the movie. Obviously, no. um, mm-hmm. I actually have this real knife upstairs. Yeah, you could just switch it. Um, and so I think I'm going to switch it out. But uh, yeah, it's just plastic. And I, again, I think it was probably because of shipping, but it does really fold into itself. I mean, it's, 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 it, it's a real knife, just plastic. <laughs> it's a kid's toy. Hmm. Kind of. You I mean, can I, get I, I a switch like cone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it looks good. I mean, it looks decent in the statue itself. There's a little slot uh, that it goes in. Um, and so it, it adds some nice storytelling to the front of it, I think. So anyway, it's very cool. How does how does that figure into all the Heath Ledger things you've seen as far as looking like Heath Ledger? It depends on the angle. Um, and I talk about that in the review. I feel like this angle right here looks really good, especially if you're kind of looking down on him. Looks very, very good. This angle right here, I think, is awful. Uh, does not cut it for me. So if, I, if this was my only option to display him, I would have returned him immediately. Hmm. But... It, straight on 
and off to the side, I feel like it's perfect. Um, I, I mean, I think for me, it, it has, it just, it has a giant wow factor. It's the, it's just one of those things where you're just always going to look at it first. Um, mm-hmm. and I know that not everybody thinks the likeness is perfect and I don't think the likeness is perfect either. I feel like it's nine point something. I feel like it's very, very good, but it really does depend on the angle. Um, and I, I love it. I think, I, I mean, for me, it is my favorite ledger Joker piece that I have. Um, it looks probably, really good. Yeah, it looks good on camera. Yeah, it looks mm-hmm. great on camera. Um, I think that I mean my prime one's probably a second place contender uh, with Queen being third. Um, but I just I love it. I'm so glad they, I'm so glad I bit the bullet. I know it's a risk spending this kind of money, but I mean he's just awesome, awesome. And his hair it's turned out better than I thought. Yeah, it definitely needs some work still, but it's I mean out of the box. I mean this is pretty much out of the box. I think it looks pretty decent. It does. It's um, not bad. It's not bad. I again, I, I feel like I need. To We've take it seen a worse. Yeah. We've seen a We've lot. We've seen worse. way worse hair. Yeah. Um, I know some reviewers were complaining about the brown in his hair. That's accurate. I mean, it's a hundred percent. This hair, it transitions perfectly. There's a lot of um, baldness in his the front, that thinning of his hair. I mean, so I I feel like they nailed the hair in terms of color, in terms of what they did with it. <clears throat> it's just that it it sucks when it ships because it's all crinkled up. Uh, you know. They they clearly spray it with some sort of hairspray, some sort of product. Mm-hmm. Um, but Chris, is the uh, is the light up in the base? Is it red as it appears on camera? Yes. Yep. Very yeah, very that's red. Cool. Yep. Um, kind of take you inside of there. That's, oh yeah, uh, there you go. I uh, like that. Again, it well, is just it is just a light. It's just a single single light that shines on the basically in the inside of it that's really funny it's very similar to the to the prime one it's very similar base it's got yeah. the exact same idea huh. um, mm-hmm. but, uh, it, it, it is again just battery powered uh, you just yeah. flick it on and off and it's really easy to turn on and off i mean it, i don't feel like it was necessary but it does add something i, I like the little extra orange because you also have the mm-hmm. orange you have the orange inside of the coat so it's got a little bit of color matching i think is nice um but <clears throat> Again, I, I, it's, I think it's awesome. I'm happy with him. Yeah, he's awesome. I guess that's mm-hmm. all that matters. <laughs> I'm happy with him, I guess. Um, oh, 300 people watching, guys. Thank you so much. Please hit that like button. Um, and uh, now we'll look at some photos. Does the family like him? <laughs> they do. Oh, good. They all think he's pretty, pretty damn awesome and creepy. Um, okay, is, can you guys see this uh, large size on the screen? It's white, but yeah. All white? I see is white. Yeah. Yep. But you see the picture? Nope. No, it looks like it started to load and it stopped. Okay. Let me try something different then. They have changed they have changed the present presenting mode. Let me see if this does anything different here. How about now? Yes. We see the thumbnails. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, can you see it big though? Like nope. large on the screen? Not yet. Yeah, yeah. It fills the screen, but it's your th- thumbnail view. All right. Let There's me no look one picture selected. It's all a, a bunch of them. Okay. Hold on. Okay, what is going on with this? I don't know. Sorry, guys. StreamYard has clearly changed something. So Bravo Tango in the chat is asking if my X-Men are boxed up. I'm selling my X-Men, and they're all gone except for Colossus. He is still available. How about now? Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's like normal now? Yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, so... Th- what it's a lady in a white dress it is a white lady in a white dress you're correct um so this is uh clearly Liv tyler um some people saw these photos and they immediately like who is that supposed to be you know who is that i disagree i think you can absolutely tell it's her is it perfect no um again we've we've been pretty critical about J and D, especially with the price point um this piece in particular seems to be one of the most 
disliked um, so far. Uh, I, I do think that that looks like Liv Tyler. I showed this to my wife. She said, yeah, it's Liv Tyler. Um, is it perfect? No, uh, but I do think it looks like her. Um, that's just my opinion. What do you guys think uh, as you look at these photos? I don't know if I seen these photos, but the other photos I, I, I was looking at looked to me looked like her. Are these the only photos or were there other ones too? Uh, this is it. Okay. Um, something different. I think yeah, it was an odd choice of expression and pose. There were she had better moments in the movie they could have chosen from like that. <laughs> yeah, like this, uh, then obviously a different dress. Um, but these are kind of side by side just to kind of compare. Uh, you know, we can look at faces. Um, again, I feel like it's 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 kind of mannequin-y, and I, I always feel like the lips are kind of weird on on Jandy pieces. But I mean, I could tell that it's her. But is it as good as the one the real photo of her? No. Um, what do you, is, or is there anybody that feels like it's just awful? Like it feels like it's not even close to her. No, I mean, per- yeah, I, I like it personally. So. Looks like a high-end Barbie doll to me, but uh, you, uh, that's uh, you, yeah. I mean, that's you know, a very valid point. I mean, and, that, and, that's, and I don't mean to give a bad name to high-end Barbie dolls. Like, if that's your thing, cool. You know, right. I mean, but I, I think I tend to lean toward what Jeff Morris was getting at, which is, yeah, okay, it's a pretty girl in a dress. Okay. But that may be I something. I didn't know who it was immediately. I mean, even looking at some of the other ones, it was, you could tell who it was supposed to be. But I mean, at first I was like, who's this random girl? Mm-hmm. I think if because we were, it just you know, didn't look like how I remembered her looking in the movie. I think if they would have put like whatever that, you know, that the, the head adornment, you know, the jewelry mm-hmm. that we saw in that other picture, I think it would have been even more obvious who this was. That was pretty prominent, you know, in the, in the movies, but I mean, it's cool. I'm sure for somebody that's collecting Lord of the Rings, this is an absolute grail. <laughs> yeah. And you know? what is it? $3,000. Oh shit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's oh three grand. God. Sorry. Pardon my French, but good. Yeah. Lord. But really? that's, <clears throat> but you're right. I'm sorry. Come on. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, some people did a uh, before and after uh, they kind of trimmed her jawline. I, I do think this looks better. Um, mm-hmm. if they made a few tweaks, uh, you know, kind of putting her eyes a little closer together and some other things, but um, I think if they put her in that green dress, she would look better. I think her skin is so pale and the dress is so white and it's just kind of, nah. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Todd's got her for twenty five fifty. Twenty five fifty. With the free shipping to the U.S. Okay. It's a little better. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Uh, All right. So let's move on from her um, to a piece that I'm kind of maybe interested in now. This is a new tease of the life-size bail um, from Infinity Studios. Kind of see a side profile. I think that looks pretty good from what we can see. I just don't know how I feel about an unmasked portrait. I, I, I I love that they're doing a bail like this, but I also... I don't know. I think I would maybe rather it be cow or, you know, have his cowl. I mean, he does, he's holding his cowl. Yeah. But I, I, I doubt, I doubt we're going to get a cowled version. Well, I, I think, just think like, yeah, the same way you said, I think the only way I would purchase a statue where it was just the actor's face is like, like in this case, if he was holding the actual cowl. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that was smart. Um, yeah. I think the selling point is the actor likeness. So I don't think they want to hide it. Yeah. So I can I can see myself getting this one and pairing it with my Joker, mm-hmm. just because I I love the Dark Knight. So we'll see we'll see uh, with the reveal. There there's the Joker right there. It'd be cool if you could put the cowl over his head. <laughs> yeah, it would that would be really cool actually. Probably mess everything up. Oh. It, it might, but it'd be cool. So there's me and me and my me and my pal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this are these are some photos of the. Uh, newly released and i know people are really excited about this um this is the 89 um batmobile from hot toys uh, on display so this one's up for pre-order right now this is the uh the, the third time they re-released it right is it really i think so it was the second or third it was 
maybe third. I no. think it's the second. The second. I, I thought it was the second because I, I know some people were really, I mean, they're always looking for this thing. They're always trying to find one. So um, they had this on display too, which is interesting because they, and they had this on display at San Diego at the sideshow booth, but um, this is not for sale um, as of right now. Um, I don't know if they'll sell it at a later point, but just the fact that they have it on display this week, I thought was interesting, but uh, what do you guys think of the likeness on the hot toys? This is a, not necessarily a reissue, but it's a new version. Looks good. Yeah, that looks good. I think, I think right? I, I think it looks great. Yeah. Looks like I'm the man. I feel like they, they, they captured his mouth really good and that kind of that over texture that the, the rubber had on the, you know, the mm-hmm. suit. And I think that looks really good. Uh, but yeah, I think that looks the old one at a reasonable price is just out of the question. Right. It's, it's insane at this point. And this one's going to be new. Right. Uh, here's some photos of the actual statue um, as they were kind of, you know, painting them up. I don't love that mouth as much. <laughs> it's a um, funny expression, but it definitely looks like Keaton though. It does. I think they did a nice job. He's got that, that, that smile. This is another one with the battle damage. Where's his eye? <laughs> Um, I think it's that, that, that I think it has the PERS unit that that adjustable eyes. Mm. Um, so I just I think that they just don't have them in for this as they're showing this off. I think these are the ones that the painter posts. Oh, okay, they're working on yeah. like when they announce it's going up to order because uh, I just, okay. I think I think of his name, but he nor they they have a couple of the people that paint the prototypes post their work on the head sculpts. Um, and they're always under really good lighting. So you can really see the detail. Um, I think, I, and again, I just, I love the, the texture of the cowl. It just looks like rubber. Um, really well done. There's some detail on the suit. Uh, and it comes with the gargoyle for the deluxe version, which I thought was a nice touch. I'm surprised about that computer thing. I, I thought that would be in like a mega deluxe. I did too. Uh, I just thought that was a no brainer for this thing to come as, as at least one option. Offer it as one <laughs> separate thing. And that's why I thought maybe they would offer it separate, but I think I, I would have felt, I would have thought they would have done it by now. Yeah. With the other, other releases. Um, I love that they did the Vicky Vale shoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that was really great to put next to the gargoyle. And then there's the swap out mouth. Oh, okay. So anyway, I thought it was pretty cool. All the little gadgets and weapons. So I, I know that got a lot of interest. Um, here's a piece that uh, I know a couple of us ordered. I think Dan ordered it and myself. Anybody else order this one? No, it's tempting, but I'm tempted to order the, I told, I'm telling you guys that the sideshow Joker PF. Yeah. Um, this one, uh, we got the photos and the pre-order kind of out of nowhere. <clears throat> um, and so uh, it's just really a, a fun piece. I think it's beautiful. It's got that classic ivy. Um, it uh, was what, Valentine's Day, Chris. Oh, it was Valentine's. Well, I bought myself a Valentine's. There you go. Her I base. A, um, I bought myself a redhead. Don't tell my wife. Her, her base <laughs> kind of matches up with the uh, the pogo stick joker. He had that same uh, GCPD. uh we call it like the oh the floor, yeah, uh, like crest yeah. shield, yeah, yep. up that, shield, that, that yeah. emblem. I think it's from the building. I feel what it's called. Uh, Dan, I don't think you hesitated on this one at all, did you? No, I think she looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really I pretty. Love I love the style of it. Um, I think she'll look, you know, she'll look great next to the uh, the tweeter headquarter scale Harley. Um, you know, I, I think some, you know, similar style. Um, I just love the pinup look of her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's very it's, classic looking. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very... I, like, I like the hat and yep. the plant's mouth. Yep. It's just really cool. Yeah. I like it a lot. Beautiful piece. And she's gorgeous. I mean, the portrait's gorgeous and the anatomy, the sculpt looks great. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, this is up for pre-order right now. If you guys have missed this one, uh, $700 though. I mean, look at um, that. 
that's beautiful. Right there. Yeah, that's just absolutely. That. I mean, sexy, yeah. stunning, strong. Yep. You name it. Beautiful. Uh, 18 inches high. Some people were a little bit worried about the size of it. Um, were kind of like the, small or big? They thought it was a little small. At 18 what, inches? Yep. What? I think it's scaled correctly, but it will look short compared to many other Batman pieces. Yeah. Yeah, that was the complaint. Yeah. Well, so. she can be down front in a cluster. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's where I'll put yeah. her. Yep. It's actually kind of convenient. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I like that there's varying heights because yeah. it's hard to display, especially if you're trying to put them in front of each other. Um, and you could difficult. put her on a styrofoam block if you want her hard. And that's right. <laughs> uh, Eric pointed out this is a great alternative. This is a total Bahia piece. She's uh, cute. If you want a little yeah. bit of a more of a budget piece, uh, but still fun. Yeah, fun piece. Yeah, I was trying to say they look similar without saying they look similar to <laughs> Costa. Oh, right. I'm, I'm just saying like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just an, it's an yeah. alternative. It almost looks like the same exact pose and everything. But uh, there's a lot of her, a statues of her sitting on a you yeah. know, tree like that. So. Yeah. It is very similar. Though. Um, uh, I'm a massive Last of Us fan after watching it on HBO. It's uh, yeah. been a really a lot of fun. I know uh, all of us have been watching it in the uh, the Rogues Gallery here. Mm -hmm. um, but this was updated from Prime 1. They updated uh, Ellie's face. Um, and uh, this is it's uh, more accurate to the video game, um, which mm. I think looks really great. Uh, a lot of people are really happy they made the upgrade. And I think she looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the video game looks like, but that looks like a real person. Look at that skin texture there. Kind of reminds me of the girl that's playing her a little bit. Good casting. <clears throat> but I, I just I love these updated images, and I thought it was cool that they, they weren't satisfied. They wanted to tweak it because they didn't need to, but uh, they did. So, again, yeah. props to Prime 1. That's amazing. Speaking of amazing, uh, th these were shown today. This is a production piece of the Mira. Obviously, there's a lot of hate for Amber Heard, and you can either feel hate or not. But uh, I think this thing looks beautiful. Uh, really, really good to the actor likeness, I think. What do you guys think as you, as you look at these? Stunner. Yeah. yeah. Absolute stunner. I think it's prettier than she actually was in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good I mean, point. There's a there is a softness to her that did not come through in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, again, Infinity Studios has done a phenomenal, phenomenal job. I, I don't know how many of these will sell because again, a lot of people don't like her <clears throat> after the whole Johnny Depp thing. Um, but it but is pretty. It is beautiful. Yeah, it's insane. they killed it's, this the job on it. Even yeah. the base looks cool. The yep. base has got this really great translucent water effect. It does look cool. Look how beautiful it is. It wraps around and the then, arm. Yeah, that yeah. was the thing that I thought was cool. Shows some nice movement there. Uh, again, the texture on her suit. Um, I'm assuming her chest uh, going up to her neck will be silicone. Um, I'm wondering. That's that's a a good question. Do you think it's like <coughs> will be well, or will they? You know, like. Was it wasn't that Harley Quinn from the same people? Yes, it was like the only difference with that is that uh, you know, we saw some reviews on online. She had a choker, and so that mm -hmm. separated the line of her chest, and and she had a full shirt on. Um, so that that was okay, whereas this is fully exposed where there is no seam. Mm -hmm. So I would assume you know, everything else is polystone, but I would assume her chest going up to her head, and then hopefully her hands are all all silicone um they should be uh, she's not holding anything so it should be you know not an issue with her holding uh also she does come with the crown uh so you have the two different looks um depending on how you want to display her but uh, i would assume that she's going to start shipping pretty soon here but again whether I you love her or hate her better than the harley did yeah i think so too i think this first. um a lot of you guys know i did cancel the harley um and so that was a difficult, but I think it was probably the right decision for me. Um, but uh, again, this is, I, I do think this is one of their best ones they've done to date. Really pretty. Mm -hmm. I love this. Love this picture from our friend art statue collector. This is another infinity studios piece. Uh, this is, this is, <laughs> I'll never let go. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was like uh, just a little higher art, just a little higher. Um, <laughs> 
but uh, anyway, this is the Anne Hathaway. Uh, I think this is one of the best pictures of her so far. Um, looks just like her. <laughs> um, but uh, this is a piece that I've, I've, I've considered. I, I, at this point, it's a no for me. Um, but I'm not going to say no forever. Uh, it's you know a possibility maybe down the road. But uh, I, I do think it turned out really nice. Um, this, uh, I put this in here because this is waitlisted. Um, so obviously this was a very popular choice for a lot of collectors. Um, what was the ES dun, like? Dun, 500? Dun, dun, plot twist. <laughs> yeah, it's 500. Yeah, yeah. 500. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's waitlisted at prime one. Um, so again, congratulations to anybody getting this one. Um, really excited. Someone to mentioned add. in the chat right. earlier that you can still get it from GFX distribution. Okay. Uh, there might be some local retailers that you can get it from. So obviously, Prime One is waitlisted because of retailers buying directly from them. Um, so you, you know, obviously, you can't. You you can still jump on the waitlist of Prime One, but also check your local retailers and maybe they can get it for you. That went from <clears throat> pitchforks and torches to sold out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was like a whiplash moment. It sure was, but uh, beautiful piece as well. <clears throat> this is the uh, last Ronin that was teased uh, on bike. I thought this was a fun, fun piece. This is a quarter scale from uh, PCS. Um, little tease. We haven't seen any other photos, but uh, what do you guys think of this? I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, speaking of pitchforks, <laughs> I, haven't seen, I haven't seen too many pitchforks this week. Uh, this is the Merciless. Obviously, they've already done a blue version, um, but this is the red version, uh, very similar to what XM did. Uh, this is part of their 10-year um, anniversary where they're doing the variants, such as this one. This is part of their 10-year anniversary also. So they're doing these repaints, these variants. Um, I think it looks cool with the red. I think it's pretty awesome. I think I'd still probably prefer the blue, but uh, still cool yeah. they're offering, I suppose. Yeah, I think I still like the blue. I'm surprised they didn't do... Uh, in, in the comic, does he have a gold... Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has like a, a gold one. I'm surprised they didn't well, do gold. Don't hold your breath. There'll be a gold one. That's next year. <laughs> yeah, that'll be next year. You'll see a gold variant. Uh, I wish I was into this line because the details on these are insane. They're so good. Again, Prime One continues to kill these. Yeah, I didn't see too many people complaining about this repaint. Yeah, it, not as many people on this one. And maybe people just don't care about this. I don't know. Uh, somebody posted this today. This is the life size um, Iron Spider from Queen Studios. Oh, oh okay. So here's the dead body in the box <laughs> wrapped in the cellophane. The dog's kind of like, What the hell is going on? The mummy, <laughs> mummy. <laughs> but uh, it's not my favorite Spider Man, but still looks pretty cool on display. Yeah, it is. It's cool suit because it has lights in it. Okay. Yeah. Got the light up base, which is cool, and then the light up lights, like Jeff just said. It's it's a cool piece, uh, cool display behind him too. I've got a photo at the end of uh, this guy's bus collection. Really impressive. It's crazy how many were made. Did that say edition size thirteen hundred, like twelve ninety nine? Uh, no, it was much smaller. It was a three hundred two ninety nine. Oh, I says oh, okay. I was gonna say wow. This was his was sixty five. So only three hundred made or two ninety nine. Okay. <clears throat> wow. Pretty cool though, right? Yeah. Good detail on him. Yeah, the texture in the suit looks great. Yeah, I mean, it just looks very good. The video from whatever show that was where they had the bust with Tom Holland's head looked like this too, like all the textures were there. Yeah, real, real similar. Um, we This was a review we had on the channel. I just uh, put in a couple of photos, but uh, this is the production of the Doctor Strange. Thank you, everybody that watched that review. It was a great guest review. Um, that thing that, looked really good. In it the does. Video. It does look good. I'm really impressed. I mean, and the hair looked really good out of the box. Yeah, and that's that's hard to do. And I I, yeah. I agree. I think it, it, Queen did a really nice job. Again, this is Queen Studios with this one, not Infinity. Um, look at that skin. It's just crazy. The eyebrows got me because I mean. He's got, you know, got some funky eyebrow pattern yeah. going on that looks very realistic. 
They did a great job on him. Here's part that of his guy collection. Has some great collection. Yeah, look That's at that. Awesome. Everybody's like, when is he going to do the room tour? So we're working on that. That Thanos just looks pissed off and big. <laughs> I think it's massive. Um, Ang uh, Sang uh, posted some photos of their uh, factory process. I thought it was pretty cool to see. They have all these little red arrows. So this is what they send back to the factory when they need to make a, an adjustment or you know, there's something wrong with the statue. Uh, this is uh, our, my scarecrow that I have coming. Uh, they also had photos of the Zantana, like just little areas where they make note of the factory. I, I thought these were kind of cool photos mm -hmm. that kind of show some behind the scenes of like what, what areas they need to redo. That is cool. So little little red ones. Um, somebody chimed in <laughs> that used to work for Frying One. I think it was maybe Brian. He said it's like in the old days they used to have like a million of these red things all over every statue. So. I've seen that before. Usually it's like masking tape, though, not with the... Uh, yeah, sometimes there's masking. Uh, I think I had one photo with masking, or maybe I didn't save that one. Um, nope, I don't, but anyway, pretty cool. I, had, um, I think it was my White Knight on bike, um, the Batman on bike that came. I had two piece, two parts of the statue had pieces of masking tape on the keys that they were numbered. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's just something they clearly didn't take off in the factory. Yeah, they forgot to exactly. take it off. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I left them on. I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, I just threw this in here. This is a great cover of, of Ray Shagul, one, one Bad Day, uh, or Raz Agul, however you want to say it. Um, but I want this as a statue. I think this looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Would love that. That's a good general purpose version. Yeah. I think so too. And he looks. Nice. You know, more than just a guy in an outfit or a suit, it does yeah. look very villainy. Yep, I agree, Jeff. Yeah, it looks. So I like good. the eyes too. They look yeah. kind of red. They do, and I love I love the fur, kind of like what they did with Penguin. Mm -hmm. I think they could do something like that. So, again, Johnny, if you're watching, we we really want him. There, there is a box set coming with all of these books and the one bad day series. I saw that that's coming up soon. That's cool. Where you'll be able to get all of those in one, like a hardcover. I think so. Uh, I, yeah, great. I actually ordered that, uh, Jeff. Oh, it's already on Amazon. Yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll have it to show everybody. Okay. Uh, yeah, here's uh, a picture. Uh, sorry. I had these out of order, but, uh, here's another, here's that picture of like the tape. I was, uh, yep. You got a <laughs> super chat in the, Oh, can, uh, can you tell me what it is and what they said? Uh, it's from John678 for $20. And it wow. says, I'm real pissed about that red Prime 1 Merciless, uh, not because it's a repaint, but because the DX version was sold out on their website for the longest time. So I had to settle for the regular, which arrived last month. Oh, I'm sorry wow. to hear that. that. That is frustrating. Now you got another one. <laughs> Yeah, 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 no kidding. Oh, um, you got another super chat. Oh, another super oh. chat. Oh, well, thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, also from John678 for five dollars. Uh, thank you. And, and lo and behold, uh, after this version was announced, the DX is back for sale. What do you guys think happened there? Oh, the original DX was available now. Batches, maybe. Yeah, it's good. That's all I can think of. It must have been batches. We don't need no stinking badges. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really frustrating. I don't understand that at all. But I mean, that's 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 all I could think of is that they're making it that way. But did it sell? Did he say it sold out? It said sold out. Mm, I'm curious. Yeah, it says the DX version was sold out on their website. So he settled for the regular. So yeah, that if they say it's sold out, that's, that's different than like waitlisted. Are you sure it didn't say like waitlisted? And now the DX is back for sale. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be a really annoying. Yeah, maybe it was waitlisted because yeah, like you said, you, once it's sold out, that's it. I don't know. I mean, maybe contact Prime One just to see what they say. Um, yeah. You know, maybe they'll be able to help you out a little bit. Um, well, thank you again for the super chats, guys. Thank you. Um, so this is uh, the, that uh, great, was it six scale, right? It's, uh, I think it's six scale. Um, mm -hmm. And this is from uh, Sume Art. Um, 
just an impressive piece. I am blown away by this. Um, I think new is that Joker stand. I don't remember them ever showing that before. Yeah. Um, so because you had to buy, there was two separate versions or the deluxe that had both. Um, so this is the just really fun piece. And they the Batman one just started to ship. Um, I've actually been talking, having some great conversations with their creative director, um, this last week. Um, and, uh, we're going to do a lot of stuff together, I think, uh, including some, uh, some exclusive uh, reveals here on the channel. Nice. Um, cause they, they've got more Batman stuff coming. Um, and he said that it is one of the coolest things they've ever done. Um, so I'm really excited for their next piece. Uh, so we're going to have, we're going to talk on the phone next week and, uh, kind of work out some details, but, um, just, I, I love this piece. It's not a scale that I, that I collect, but I really want this one. I really love it a lot. Right. Um, this it's just got so much storytelling going on. It's just a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, I did want to announce that cause I, I'm excited to kind of, uh, you know, have a little bit of a partnership with them and, and do some stuff on the channel. So it's exciting. Um, this is a piece that I have, I had no interest in getting, but it's kind of growing on me. Uh, anybody else? Like, I think it, I love this. I love the way it looks. It's small though. I mean, it's kind of small. You, you went from not liking, uh, the Frank Miller Batman to now this might be your second one. <laughs> I know. And, but like, this is a Jim Lee, yeah. um, which I think draws uh, me to uh, it. Dan, do you have any interest in this being a Jim Lee fan like I, you are? Or what do you I think? I like I it, but. I'm steering clear. <laughs> okay. Um, is it, is it the art or is it the price point? Uh, I don't think it's the price point. The okay. price point, uh, I think, is fair for what the piece $1, is. To yeah, twelve hundred dollars ish. Yeah, I mean, you're you're getting two quarter scale figures, three arguably if you include Joker. arguably three. Yep. You arguably, know, yeah. um, it's a it's a fairly <laughs> large, you know, pretty cool base. I, I mean. I wasn't put off by the price. I'm just not a Frank Miller collector per se. Um, like you, I mean, no surprise. It, <laughs> uh, it, it's just not my favorite artwork. You know, I don't, you know, Frank's cool. He's an icon. I've got a couple of CGCs because I think I have to because I'm a Batman collector, but, um, and I respect the guy and his work, but it's not, yeah, doesn't, doesn't speak to me. I don't need to spend the money and, take up the space um i think that this joker here makes it by the way <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure um one thing i did want to say i had it incorrect uh when i did my hit or miss video my reaction video i assumed that the joker was magnetized into the base that is incorrect um the there's two separate bases so depending on whether you order the the, the ultimate version this is what you will get it is not magnetized or keyed in joker's part of the base so um i did want to convey that because i did have it wrong i just assumed uh, it would be simple for them to do but uh, i was wrong and uh, he is part of the base just like batman is part of the base with the bane versus batman so um very similar concept there so anyway uh so yeah, that's that. Uh, again, I, congratulations to anybody that does pick this one up. I do like it. Uh, anybody else like it? I know Dan made some great points. Anybody else thinking about this one or is everybody not so much? I like it, but I'm not buying it. At least not right now. Yeah. It could always change my mind. <laughs> but really fun, really fun. I uh, just had note that uh, there's been maybe some, maybe people not playing nice in the chat. I do ask that you guys please be respectful. Uh, Don't make me come down and, there. Yeah, <laughs> right. Jeff will come down there. So please, please be respectful with your comments and be respectful of each other, please. I'm not crazy about the Batman in that piece. I don't like that. Yeah. I like, I do like the the regular. Like I guess I, yeah. I like this one. I don't like the ultimate with the weird teeth. I like I the Joker. I like the Robin. I don't like the Batman. Yeah, it looks like the one on the right. I can't tell if the picture is just a little closer up, but look at the size of his chin on the right. It like gets even bigger. It's even bigger. You know, it just looks out of proportion. Well, it's like maybe he's got like his jaw kind of jutted out. Maybe I don't know. I think I don't like generous, it. But yeah, I, I feel like he looks kind of derpy. Yeah. Like yeah, that. Kind of. yeah. Can you zoom back in on the left one? Yeah. 
What's on his chin? It almost looks like a. It's got like it's cross hatching. Oh yeah. Yeah, shading, right? Yeah, they did the that prime one shading with the cross hatching. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would buy it just for the Joker. I think <laughs> I love the Joker. Joker is cool. That's my favorite part. Yeah. Yeah, it's me so too. Good. Me too. It's really good. It, I don't think it works as well without it. I agree. I think it needs the Joker. I, I mean, if you're going to get it, you got to get this version. I think. And I didn't realize he's a corpse in this. Yeah, <laughs> that's the I best mean, part. He's already dead. I knew in the story he he does kill him, right? Yeah, he kills him, and so yeah. he's floating in the tunnel of love is what the scene is. But I didn't realize when I saw it that he's already dead. (laughs) Pretty great. Uh, This is finally going to start for pre-order. That's that great symbiote uh, Spider-Man. Really, really fun piece from XM. Yeah, it's up. Oh, it it went up today or maybe yesterday. Sometime this week. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I love it. Uh, some pictures of uh, some more McFarland toys. I know uh, there's some viewers that really like the McFarland stuff. So we've got a new Nightwing coming out. And um, I think this is maybe from a Titans. Not sure. I know this one is. I'm just not familiar. Do you guys see this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our, our first kind of teaser of the, the new Joker uh Part two uh, with Lady Gaga, assumingly playing a version of Harley. So that's exciting. So do you uh, think she's Harley there or <clears throat> Dr. Quinze- Quinzel? I think she's going to be Dr. Quinzel. Mm-hmm. But I think Harley's going to be his fantasy. Okay. Because, you know, if you watch the first film, it's, it's subjective whether the entire thing's in his brain. Yeah. Yeah. It's all made up. Um, So that's my prediction is that she will be a doctor in the hospital. um, And I feel like the Harley persona will be his imagination of her. Mm -hmm. That's just my guess. But I'm betting that that's where the musical will will come in. Right. That'll be the musical scene. That it's not real, really happening. Right. I agree. It's just all his fantasy. Yep. Yep. I like that. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, these photos are not Jeff Delaney's. I don't remember if you posted any Jeff or not. Um, yeah, I did. Okay. Um, I trying to scramble to get photos this week. Um, but this is another collector posted these. Uh, again, please check out uh, Jeff's uh, review is if you haven't done so. Michael's in the chat. He says that's his photo. <laughs> oh, that's the, oh well, that's awesome. Well, thank you again for posting these guys. Um, look at that portrait. It is absolutely incredible really good mm-hmm. <clears throat> i'm kind of excited because who it is yeah um they actually uh i'm going to fan expo dallas i believe i got press passes um for me and my friend damon and, and ledger again and uh rosario dawson's gonna be there uh, which i thought was pretty cool nice. oh that's awesome yeah i have so, a lot of respect for her she, you talked about amy knowing her stuff at sideshow i feel like rosario was one of those rare actresses that understood the comic book community from the start it's awesome. And has done a lot of good work with, you know, she was in two Sin City movies back in what 2005 was the first one. Yep. She did. She's done Wonder Woman voice, Wonder Woman on multiple animated films. Daredevil. Uh, Daredevil, you know, multiple yeah. Marvel series as the, as that nurse character. Yes. Yep. Clerks. She was in The Defenders. I think she's awesome. Yeah, she's really great. So I'm hoping that she might be somebody I try to meet. Yeah. Chevy Chase is going to be there. I feel like I got to meet him too. Huh. <laughs> I love Christmas vacation. I love that movie. I just got to meet him for that. But uh, this is an interesting. This is from in art. Um, the, the Batman and Bruce Wayne. So th- there's a before and after. There's some, some of these pictures. I kind of think the before looked better. I don't know about you guys. Um, mm-hmm. I know some, some people kind of made that same comment. Like this is the, I, I just feel like the before looks a little bit better. What do you guys think? Mm. I don't know. I think I'd like the before hair on the after face on the other picture. Yeah, Maybe that's what it is. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so they're, they're tweaking him still. So, uh, for you six scale collectors another example right there that's Wait, the, uh, a, a, a member 
changed it, or the, that's the, the company that made that change? The company. Oh, wow. The company has updated it. Hmm. Um, these are some cool photos. This is uh, just some comparison for people that like to like these photos like I do. So we have the Prime one off to the left. You've got the J&D Batman, which I, I feel like is the, the best Batman out there um, in terms of accuracy, um, especially with the face portrait. Of course, it is the most expensive uh, by far. Um, still real happy with my Queen Studios one. And then, of course, you have the Prime One Joker next to him. Um, here's an, another comparison. You got the Queen Studios on, on, my, on your right and the Bale portrait, I feel like, is more accurate on the J&D um, when, when you look at them side by side. But both still good, especially for the price point you get with the Queen Studios. That's a lot of chin on the Queen Studios. Yeah, the, Just the yeah. space between his mouth and the bottom of his chin seems... Yep. Something I just don't weird. feel like I, I don't feel like they, they got Bale's mouth on the Queen Studios. Right. Um, like when I'm looking at mine, like it feels this looks really weird to me on this. Like when I'm looking at him in real life, uh, he's more arrowed down, like his face is a little bit more down. So it doesn't look like yeah. that. That's what I was just I mean, that was that's, that's what I was just showing here, Chris. Yeah, it, it's not you don't look up at him like that. It's, you don't. You, it's kind of more like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it, that makes a big difference when you're looking at them like that. It looks much, much better. So uh, I, I, I still feel like for the price point, the Queen Studios is still a great option. I mean, still I've got the happy. prime one and I feel like, you know, you got more Batman for your money because he's just bigger. Yeah. <laughs> um, here you have the J&D Batman portrait silicone versus the Queen Studios um, portrait. Uh, I do. I personally think that the the J and D looks better here, um, yep. But I think they're both they're both still good. Again, for what they are. Again, you're looking at what three thousand dollars versus nine hundred, maybe a thousand. I agree. The J and D is better, but like I said before, I cannot look at that portrait and not think of George Bush. It, yeah. it looks <laughs> every time I look at him, that's all I see is George Bush. Yeah, it's every one. time. Every the one on the right looks more like Val Kilmer than it does. Uh, he does look like Val Kilmer. I was just going <laughs> to say that. I could see that too. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> these are some uh, in-hand photos of the uh, Queen Studios piece here, and I think this looks fantastic. Yeah, which looks good. which scale is this? This is third. This is their third scale Queen. The one on the on the small Batmobile. That looks, um, it looks like he had a real heavy five o'clock shadow. Does Pattinson have a, like that, that doesn't, does he have a heavy five o'clock shadow like he's that? He's got some, but I don't, I, I feel like it's just the lighting here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that could be. But he, I mean, he clearly has some. Hmm. Maybe they did some of that. I mean, there you can see like his upper lip. See how it's not yeah. as pronounced there. Yeah, it's just shadow. Uh, and then you have the unmasked portraits as well. Um, I do like that they have the little stands for him. But anyway, I know some collectors have already been getting this one in hand. So congratulations to anybody that's uh, picking this one up. I do think that likeness looks pretty good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That looks good. That's good. Yeah, that's, that looks some good. Some of there. those pictures look like movie. Yeah, like, like stills. Yeah. yeah. Good lighting. So I do think this is a, a good option for collectors. Again, I know not everybody likes the the base, but it's just a little tiny Batmobile. It is. It's a little <laughs> like look at look at that little cute little Batmobile down there. It's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> it could uh, benefit from a big star from block. That's right. Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> or one of Dan's uh, homemade risers, which would look which yeah. would great. Yeah. There you yeah, go. There you go. Uh, this is a new Boba Fett from uh, Sideshow, uh, actually. Um, I think this looks really good with the new paint. It's better for two grand. Is that how much it is? Two thousand dollars. Yikes! That's a lot. That's a lot. There's, I mean, clearly like no silicone or anything like that. The, the paint, the paint does look really good. Yep. But yikes! Two thousand. Yikes. Oof. I threw a couple of these photos in. This is uh, we don't talk about um, this company very much. This is like uh, Beast Kingdom, right? I have some of these. Um, and that's oh, why okay. I threw it in there because I know Eric collects some of these. Um, they've, they've, if you're a Disney fan, they've come out with some really great stuff. Um, yeah. And this obviously is the White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. But 
I think these are really fun. Look at look how big that is. That's a big yeah. piece. I mean, it looks a little bit bigger because it's in front of the person. But like the same yeah, level. So I have I have the Little Mermaid. I have uh, Ursula, and I have Rapunzel from uh, Tangled. And, That's awesome. Um, they're they're big, but they're not as big as uh, you know what it looks like because the person's standing behind it. Well, I think your cat that did I, looked great too. Yeah, it was really good. I, I do I do think this is a kid holding yeah. him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So I think that's why he looks bigger. But I think I think it's a kid holding him. Okay. Eric, are they like eighteen inches or smaller than that? I think right around that size. Yeah. I think about okay. eighteen. Yeah. But I think they're awesome. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're very big. They just they don't like you know, gigantic like that. Like that whole entire person's like torso or something. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, this is from it. Rocky three and four from PCS. Um, haven't haven't heard a lot of love for this. Um, so right. Ant said they are going to improve it. it did, did he also come out and say that these haven't sold well? He said that the entire Rocky line has not sold well, and each piece has sold worse than the one before it. Yeah, I, I wow. thought I saw that. I thought that was pretty. I thought it was pretty brave of him to say that. I thought um, so too. Uh, and so I, I tip my hat to Ant, uh, you know, for kind of being honest about this. I mean, clearly there are some people buying, but just the fact that they say, "Hey, we're going to go in and tweak it again." That's that's a company listening, um, which I think is great. Um, there is the uh, this sculpt here uh, with the yellow and the the Italian stallion, um, of course, the, um, the the robe, and they're also doing the the red, white, and blue. This is from I think Rocky Four. Mm -hmm. um, where he uh, <clears throat> fights Drago. So um, it's fun. I mean, I, I do think that they could work on the portrait a little bit more. Is it the same statue, just different? I I believe it's, it's the exact it's, same statue. So, um, mm. yeah, it, it, it's the same, but the clothes are different and the base is different. Just as the different, the surface of the, the boxing ring will be yep. what it was in the movie. Um mm. In the in the Rocky one and Rocky two, part of the hair is different, but the sculpt of the face and body is identical. Oh, even to those. One and two, yeah. Yeah, one and two. Okay. So really, you're just you're just changing clothes, is what you're doing, pretty much. Yeah, and that's that's why there's 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 been a Rocky one and two bundle on seconds for weeks now because nobody wants to buy both. They yeah. want one or the other. Yeah, it's a weird mm. bundle. Yeah. So anyway, I other... give him credit to, he's, he's, he's done most of the major characters from the movies, even though it's been a loss for the company. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's commitment to the, to the collector right there. And that's he's it. also, he also revealed they're going to do a quarter scale line as well. And that might include a Dio or two, which makes sense for a boxing movie to have a Dio. But if these haven't sold well, why would they do a quarter scale? I don't know. He said, hopefully the quarter scale line will do better. And I said, will that be the same sculpts or different sculpts? And he said, different. Okay. Wow. Well, that's something then. Let me tell you what I think would be cool. And this made me think of it. But back in the 70s, when DC did those big, uh, almost like magazine things, and they had the Superman versus Muhammad Ali. Yeah. 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 If that they would could be... make that statue. That, that was cool. kind of like, I know, man. Every kid, you know, all my friends, we all had that. Yep. Just because, you know, that was just kind of a really cool scene. Totally agree. I think that would be awesome. I'm tempted to, to buy the Rocky two. That's that I have a lot of nostalgia for the <laughs> Rocky two. Um, so if that popped up on seconds, I might buy it. Although I'd, I'm really curious what they're going to come up with. In quarter scale. Yeah, you might want to wait since you have more quarter scale. Yeah. <clears throat> um, this is a, a Lobo print that Sideshow's doing. Uh, Alex uh, Gardner. I thought this looked awesome. That's cool. Yeah, Isn't that that's cool? Like a great yeah. statue. Oh my god, it'd be awesome as a statue. It's so well you know done. What that made me think. That's David Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. I think David Harbor should play Lobo. I do too. I think he'd be phenomenal. Dang. I love it. I haven't even thought of that. Everybody yeah. wants Jason Momoa, but yep. I think I'd like that better. Yeah. I would. 
Look at the ES on this. 150 and aluminum 50. It's pretty low ES on that. Not bad. Uh, this was that collector that had the full-size Spider-Man, uh, what his bus collection looks like. That's awesome. Pretty insane. Hmm. Pretty insane. A lot of that bus. Daredevil up there. That was cool. I don't know that I've ever seen a Daredevil bust. Sure that that that, uh, might, be a, might be a custom. Possibly. Might be. I was looking at the hot dog on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, those are our photos. So now we've got 306 people watching. One of you are going to take home a Dark Knight Return statue. Again, thanks to XM Studios. Um, absolutely incredible statue. <clears throat> and again, I want to thank them for sending that to me. Uh, again, they gifted that to me. And so I wanted to make sure that was transparent. And also, I want to make sure I give it away. So, uh, you know... Um, all I again, all all I do ask again is that you please um, pay for shipping if you are interested. Also, if you win, please let us know in the chat if you want it. Uh, otherwise, we will draw again. So, what does this the, thing look like? What does the statue look like? I'm having a hard time remembering what it looks like. Hold on, I'm let old. Get, I need let, I need <laughs> references. Let me get a photo real quick here. Uh, <laughs> hold on, just hold act please. it out. Yeah, hold please. Okay. Do, 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 do. Please interact yeah. with the chat bot while you're... He's, yeah, like there you go. He's like this, Jeff. <laughs> nice. No, no, I forgot to... da, 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 da. If you can, get, you can get through the Rogues Gallery Live chat bot, then you can you can talk to a Rogues Gallery Live ambassador. That's right. Mm. Oh, there you go. So that ring any bells now? It's a, it's one sixth, is that right? This one's the sixth scale, yeah. Okay. And then he has but like they a, made uh... this one in quarter scale too. Correct. He's yeah. got the rifle too, right? Or yeah, no? he's got the rifle. Yeah. So the rifle's the better switch out, I think. I mean, he's got he's got like two or three different hand swap outs. Um, very, cool. very very dynamic. And this this is not the best angle. He actually looks better kind of down. Uh, but he's lunging forward. Um, <clears throat> so it's a really nice piece. Again, it, it was way better in person than I was expecting. Um, I really I really liked it. So it's, it's hard for me to get rid of. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm just happy it's going to go to another collector out there that could appreciate it. And again, I don't click six scales, so I thought this would be a perfect. Uh, a piece to give back again uh, anytime I get a statue from a company I always try to um, you know give it away if I can so uh, anyway I'm just excited I could do that so anyway uh, in order to win again all I ask is that you pay for shipping and uh, the hashtag since we did get to 40k is uh, it, uh, did you say if it was international I forget I didn't hear you. Uh, as long as they're willing to pay for shipping okay Here's our hashtag, hashtag 40K Rogues, 40, hashtag 40K Rogues. So again, just type it in the chat. That's you only need, capital. Uh, it's all capital. You only need to do it once. Um, so, uh, so far, I just have my one entry. So again, hashtag 40K Rogues. Yeah, they're rolling in now. Yeah, I'm sure they are. I've got 13. Dan, you didn't put it in capital. Hey. <laughs> He's full. Hashtag 40K Rogues up to 36. We'll give it a little bit of time here before uh, uh, we get going. And again, all I ask is that you, uh, number one, please hit the like button down below if you haven't done so. You got to hit the like button to win. And also, um, if, you do wanna, if you do want it, please let us know in the chat if you do want it. So if you don't, we will draw a second place winner. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who like sneezed, but somebody sneeze. did. Yeah, somebody that was sneezed. my lovely wife. Hello, hello oh, lovely okay. wife. <laughs> uh, we got 100 entries so far. 100 entries. There's Paula entering right there. John, 78. Midnight Dip. Melanie entered. AJ, Bat Beast, Nathan Chapman, of course. Tony, Tony. All right, let's see what we're up to right now. We're up to 105. Give it a little bit more time here to let sure make sure everybody gets. And, and again, guys, you only have to do it one time. You don't have to do it multiple times. It does not increase your chances. Uh, so again, just uh, all capital, hashtag 40K Rogues. And again, I just want to take a second while people are, are typing that in. Um, first Dan of all, I want does to not have a YouTube channel, Mystery Entertainment. Yes, yeah. Dan here. 
He does have an OnlyFans. <laughs> he does have an OnlyFans. <laughs> you really don't want to see what he does nude around a statue. I'll just oh, say yeah. that. Uh, but people do pay a lot of extra for that. So if you're into yeah, that. That is an upgrade. Yep. <laughs> yep. It is an upgrade. And you have to get through the chat bot. <laughs> yep, you do. Um, and so, yeah, but uh, no, Dan uh, is uh, done some incredible uh, things for our channel, and I can't thank him enough, and I can't thank the rogues enough for uh, for being part of this 40k. Um, and again, I just uh, I can't believe we're there, uh, and uh, we're rolling. We're on the 50k now, and so uh, again, just thank you guys so very much for everybody's continued support of this channel. I can't thank you guys enough. Um, and uh, again, it just. I just still can't believe it. I can't believe what we've all created together. It's been really fun. You said only Dan's. Only Dan's. Yeah. There it is right there. So only Dan's. Only Dan's. <laughs> so the next contest we have, Dan, on the channel, we're going to do hashtag only Dan's is the, only, is the, yeah. is the keyword. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan has an only fans. No way. That's <laughs> I don't no way have correct. a channel. That's right. That's I do right. Not have an OnlyFans, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, oh, thinking about it. All right. If, 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 if times get harder, I may be on the pole. Or That's right. Only I'll be the only Dan's first paid. That's right. Co-star. That's right. Well, just imagine what you can do with all your uh, all your amazing comic shirts that you have. Yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah. You could get real. You could get real creative with that pole. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Like Medea, uh, it better be a, a telephone pole. <laughs> that's right. Okay, so I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to try to share my screen again. Uh, see if this works, if I can do that. Uh, share screen. I'm going to share a tab. All right, can you guys see that? No. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Now we can. Yeah. Okay. So I am, as of right now, calling it. Uh, we've got 125 entries. Um, I don't know how many people are watching, so I, I would like you know if you if you if you wanted to, hopefully you had ample enough time in order to enter. Um, uh, so three hundred and seven, three hundred and seven. Okay, so only one hundred and twenty five are interested in the piece. And if again, if you're not interested, thank you for not uh, you know taking somebody else's spot. So uh, although I just got another one, one twenty six. So <laughs> drum roll, please. Here we go. Oh, 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 Dan's oh, oh. I saw Dan. <laughs> All right, we got Ruthless QT as our winner. Ruthless QT, congratulations. I am going to uh, see if Ruthless QT wants it. And if they do, again, I do ask uh, that uh, you pay for shipping. And again, if you're not interested, uh, please let us know. Um, but if you are, please email me at thebatmanstatuecollector at gmail.com. And uh, we will make shipping arrangements. I'll need to get a quote, but I do need to. I do need to confirm. Ruthless QT is in the chat. Said I am here. Okay, I am here. Ruthless QT, uh, please let us know in writing that you want. Yes, it. please. Okay, right there, Ruthless QT. Yes, please. So again, congratulations to him. That's awesome. Tell very, them, very cool. That's Tell awesome. them um, your email again. Uh, okay, so the, in the chat. Yes, the Batman Statue Collector at Gmail .com. Okay, please email me uh, with your uh, your real name. Uh, what is uh, would you would you provide your real name on here? Uh, your just your first name's fine, ruthless. Um, if you would uh, let me know, that way I can verify whenever you email me. Um, and so, uh, congratulations to our winner, to ruthless QT. Um, and again, all I ask is that you uh, pay for the shipping. So anyway, congratulations. Uh, let me uh, get that off of there so we can do that there. Um, Hey, all Michael. 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 Oh, Michael. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up for tonight, guys? No. Uh, go eat. All right. We okay. gotta look into a chat bot though. Yeah, chat bot. We're gonna get the chat bot and we're gonna get that only fan set up uh yeah. here real soon. Uh hopefully the only uh, dance. Yeah, we gotta yeah, register that domain. <laughs> yep, <we're gonna> dance <laughs> domain. Oh, yeah, uh you know, actually, if you ever did start a channel, that'd be one hell of a channel name. Only yeah. Dan's. <laughs> it would be funny. That would be pretty great. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Austin says road to 50K, and that's where we're, where we're headed. Uh, and so let's, again, please do me a favor. We, we need to get the subs up for Eric and uh, um, Jeff. So, again, please visit Secret Sanctuary and All Things Art. Uh, show them some love. 
And I want to thank everybody again for tonight. Um, and again, please join me Friday night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for a live unboxing of the Prime One Punchline. Um, I can't wait. Um, it's going to kill me to wait a couple of days. <laughs> it's, in, it's in my garage right now. It's like, oh, I, just, oh. I really want to see that piece. So anyway, uh, please join me uh, Friday night. Uh, if any of you gentlemen are bored and want to come on and, and hang out with me, you can do that too if you want. Just let me know. And uh, anyway, have a great evening, and uh, we'll see you in the back cave. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Good night, Good night. all. Good night. Take care.